Hello friends, I'm Neshek and today in this video, I'll teach you how to make a professional and beautiful online t-shirt designing website. In fact, this is not just a t-shirt designing or printing website, but also a bag, hat, mug, hoodie, and even phone case designing and printing website. This website has all the features that a professional t-shirt or product printing website must have. Like we have the option to create different types of printings like DTG, embroidery, screen printing, etc. This website also has a very advanced product pricing solution. Here you can set and change the pricing of t-shirts based on different factors like quantity or quality of fabric used, number of colors, clip arts or images used. You can also set the price based on the size of the design etc. I'll show you how to easily import thousands of pre-made clip arts and templates. Now before we proceed further, let me show you a very quick demo of the exact same website that you will be creating in this video if you follow my step by step tutorial. Now the reason I show this demo website right at the beginning is because I want you guys to first understand the website that you will be creating in this video, understand how is the design of the website, what all different features are available in this website and if you like the demo website that I'm going to show you right now, you can watch the complete tutorial. So let's see that. So this is the website that you see on a screen that we will be creating in this video. This is the home page. Now as you can see at the top we have our header and in the header at the left hand side we have the logo and at the right hand side we have the main menu then after that we have the cart icon if you hover over this cart icon you can see what all products are available in your cart you can click on this up button view cart to check the cart or you can click on this checkout button and obviously do the checkout then after that you have your main section your first section your hero section in the hero section we have a nice big title subtitle and two different call to actions so first of all we have a call to action button at the left hand side which says all products if you click on this button you will be redirected to the shop page where you can, wherein you can see all the different products available on this website the second website says design yourself so if you click on this button you will see this page and here you can select which product do you want to select and after that you can design that product accordingly you can have your printing design and everything i'll show you very soon how this thing works First, let's see the home page. Now at the right hand side, you will see this image. Now all the images that I've used, all the images that I'm using to create this demo website, I've given all the images to you for free. So there is a link given in the video description below. If you click on that link, you can download all the images for absolutely free. And obviously this website is 100% mobile and tablet friendly. So if you see this website in a mobile phone, it will look really amazing because this is 100% mobile friendly. Now let's see the second section. So we have created this section featured section as our second section. Now here I'm displaying the featured products. If you want, you can display the on sale products, the recent products, you know, any kind of products over here. Now this is how this thing looks like. Now if you have multiple images for the single product, when you hover over that product, you can see the image changes. This is really amazing. You can also have a quick view of the product. So if you click on this option over here, quick view, you can have a quick view of the product. You can see the title, the price, the description and everything of the product. And you can add this product to your cart from here. You can increase or decrease the quantity. Click on this customize button to customize this product, but we'll see the customization later on. Then again, when you scroll down, you have the all the services that you provide on your website. Now design is really amazing. As you can see, the icons used is really good, really professional. And when you hover over that, the color of this thing changes. And you can see there is a very slight, very subtle animation to this icon. If you notice when I hover over that, there is a very subtle animation to this icon. Now when you scroll down, you will see your footer, which is obviously divided into four different sections. And at the bottom, you will see your copyright text. So this is your home page. Now let's see the shop page. So click on shop. Now when you click on shop page, you will be redirected to this page. This is your shop page. So all the different products that are available on your website, all those products will be displayed over here. Now at the left hand side, we have some options like search options. So a person can just search for the product from here. We have filter by price option. So if a person has a particular budget, they can just select that price range and they can filter all the products within that price range. Then we have some more options. Now at the right hand side, we have all the different products. Now let me show you how this thing works. For example, if you want to design a mug. So let's click on this option. Let's click on this product coffee mugs. Now when you click on this product, this is how the single product page looks like. 
Now at the top, you will have your icon, you will have your title. At the left hand side, you have the image. This is the product description and everything. This is the long description. A person can share this product on different social media platform. Person can see different dimension, different additional information, and they can also review this product. So all these different options are available over here. Now here, if you're just creating a regular product, that is fine. You can just click on, you can just increase or decrease the quantity, click on add to cart and you can do all the rest of the things. But if you want to customize this product, you can simply click on this button, customize. And now you will see this page. So first of all, if you want to change the color of this mug, you can do it like this. Now, as you can see, very easy to do. For example, I want maybe this color. And after that, if you want to add any images or any templates or clip arts on this, you can select this option from here. Templates option from the left hand side. Now there are thousands of pre-made templates available over here. I'll show you how you can import all these for absolutely free. For example, if I want to use this template, I can simply click on that and this template will be available over here. And this is an SVG thing, so you can control a lot of things over here. For example, you can increase or decrease the size of this. If you want to change the color, for example, I don't want this green color. So I can click on this green color, I can replace it with some other color, like as you can see on the screen. If I don't like this, maybe this blue color of the ocean, I want to change the color. I can select this blue color and replace it with some other color. So it is that simple. You can also do a lot of things. For example, you have clip art, you can add clip arts. You can upload your own images, own clip arts, custom templates if you want. You can also add some text and you can have different styles and designs of text. As you can see, curved text, oblique, bridge, you know, these kind of designs. You can also add some shapes and you can do a lot of things with these shapes. Let me show you. For example, if I add this image over here and if the image is particularly big, so I can mask this thing. For example, I can click on this shape I can, for example, I can bring this uh, star over here. I can increase or decrease the size. Then I can click on this background color and I can mask this thing. Let me show you. I can click on this option, this uh, star icon. If I click on this and now as you can see, this is how it will look like. So that background color is now inside this shape. So you can do a lot of things like this. You can control the layers. If you have multiple layer, if you are creating a very complex design, you can do that as well. You can also draw something. For example, you can control the size. You can set a color, maybe let's select the white color. You can have anything drawn over here. So you can do a lot of things over here. And once this is done, you can also control the pricing and everything. For example, if you use these many colors, for example, if you're using more than five colors, you can charge some more money, you know, that those kind of things. Or if you're purchasing this product in quantity, you will have to pay less. So there is a lot of, you know, flexibility and there is a lot of control in terms of controlling the pricing. I'll show you these things in detail in advance later on in this video. This is just a demo. Then if you want to design a t-shirt or a hoodie, same thing, you just go to that product, click on this customize button and you follow the same process. So this is very simple. For example, this is a t-shirt. Again, you can ch change the color of the t-shirt, change the fabric. I'll show you how to add these colors and everything. You can have different sizes, different quantity. So for example, you can have different prices for different color fabric. For example, this fa fabric color can be maybe for $10, but if you use this color, maybe you'll have to pay $2 extra. For sizes also, you can control the pricing and everything. The rest, all these steps are very much same, very much similar, all right? You can also click on this button. If you click on this icon, design editor icon or this link, design editor link, a person can see all the different products available on your website and they can see and they can click on this product and they can design this thing as well. Now in this video, we'll also see, we'll also cover blogging. So I'll show you how you can create different posts, different blogs, and this thing will get you, and this thing will help you to get some extra traffic, some additional traffic through Google search results. And then I'll show you how to create these extra pages like the about page, contact page, just to complete, just to make your website more complete. I don't want to give you, or I don't want to show you a website which is without the about page or the contact page, all right? Now, finally, let me show you the checkout process. So if you like this thing, for example, you can simply click on add to cart. Once this car, this product is added to your cart, you can just click on checkout. Now there are many different options available in the checkout option. For example, we have the shipping calculator. We have many different payment gateways available as well. Now here you will see the product color that you have used. Okay, this is the color if you remember we used. You can see the design and everything. If you find everything is correct, you can also see the shipping and you can control shipping as well. For example, you can control shipping. This is taxation. You can control taxation and everything and you can have different shipping costs for different products. 
For example, for mug, you can have maybe $1 shipping price. For t-shirts, you can have $2 shipping price. So you can control these things as well. Now, if you find everything is correct, you can just click on proceed to check out. And here, as you can see, you can fill in your information. You can pay through PayPal or you can even pay through your credit card or your debit card. So you can just enter your card details, click on place order. Order will be placed and this amount will be credited in your bank account. So this is how the complete process works. All right, guys. So this was a very short demo of the exact same website that we will be creating in this video. I hope you guys like the demo website. And if you like the demo website, and if you want to create the exact same website, make sure you watch the complete tutorial. All the important things, all the important information, all the important links, timestamps are given in the video description below. So you can check that out. Now, before we proceed further, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon because I have many more important and useful videos coming in the future. And if you find this video helpful, give a thumbs up to this video. If you have any doubts, any comments, any suggestions for me, you can leave them in the comments section below. Now, let's start creating this website. Alright guys, now to create any kind of website, whether it's a product designing website, an e-commerce website, a simple business website or a blog or a membership website, any kind of website, we need two basic things, a domain name and a hosting account. A domain name is simply the name or the URL of your website, for example, blogtoot.com, youtube.com, nayashik.com, google.com, all these things are different domain names. So we also have to register a domain name on the internet so that whenever someone wants to visit your website, they can type in that domain name in the browser URL bar and they can land on your website. The second and the most important thing is a hosting account or a hosting. A hosting is basically a computer wherein your entire website is saved. So this entire website that you see on a screen, this entire, this complete website, including all the different images, all the different pages, posts, all the different products, this entire website is saved in a computer. And that computer is running 24 seven. So that whenever someone visits your website from any particular country at any given time, they can always see your website live. So your website is always up and running. Now hosting is the most important thing about your website because everything related to your website is directly or indirectly dependent on your hosting. For example, your website speed, your website's performance, the user experience of your website, your ranking on Google search results is all of these things are directly dependent on your hosting. If you've selected a good hosting, your website speed and performance will be amazing. You will also get better Google search results, better ranking in Google search results because Google ranks those websites which are you know better in terms of speed and performance higher in the search results. And obviously, if you have selected a bad hosting, your website speed and performance performance will not be that great. Whenever someone will visit your website, it will take a lot of time to load the entire website. If they try to open a new product or a new page, it will take some time to load that entire page. We don't want that. Now there are literally thousands of different hosting providers available in the market, but you don't have to worry about that because I'll show you what is the best one. So you can do one thing. You can simply open a new tab and type in blogtoot.com slash SG. SG stands for SiteGround and this link is also given in the video description below. So you can simply click on that link and you should be redirected to this website. Now, as I said you earlier, there are literally thousands of different hosting providers available in the market. So out of all those, why are we choosing SiteGround? Why are we going with SiteGround? Now, the reason I'm choosing SiteGround and the reason I'm recommending you SiteGround is based on my experience. In my experience, SiteGround is the best hosting provider in terms of speed, in terms of performance, in terms of security, in terms of support. So this is the best overall hosting in my experience. I'm creating these YouTube tutorials for more than five, six years. And in this time period, I have tried many different hosting providers. I remember the first website I created was using HostGator. Then I moved on to some other hosting, then some other hosting and ultimately I'm using SiteGround. Now in my experience out of all the hostings that I've used SiteGround is really the best one and that is the reason why my personal website is also in fact my main website the main website that is connected to this channel and my main source of income blogtoot.com is hosted on SiteGround. Other websites that I own for example nayashik.com, fahem.in and some other business websites that I own all are hosted on SiteGround. So because I'm personally using it, I'm recommending it. Now here as you can see there are three different plans available, Startup, Grow Big and Go Geek. Now if you want to save some time, if you want a short and simple answer, just select the Grow Big plan and click on the Get Plan button. But if you want to understand why we are selecting Grow Big Plan, you can watch for a few more minutes. 
Now, first of all, before you select before you select any hosting or any hosting plan, you should see first few things. For, for example, first thing that you should see is how many websites can you create with that plan. For example, if you see the startup plan, here you can create one website. So in this example or in this case, as you can see, we are creating this online website, this product designing website. So if you select startup plan, you can easily create this website. You won't have any problem at all. You can have unlimited pages, unlimited products. So you can create this entire website without any problem. But tomorrow, if you want to create another website, maybe another e-commerce website or another blog or maybe another product designing website, any kind of website, you cannot do that with this startup plan here because obviously you can create only one website. Whereas if you select grow big or go geek plan, you can create unlimited websites. That is really amazing because with this, what you can do is you can create this website today. Tomorrow, if you want to create another e-commerce website, a blog, membership website, any kind of website, a listing website, any kind of website. In fact, unlimited number of websites, you can create all those websites and you don't have to purchase the hosting again because you can host all those websites in one single plan. So in short and simple words, you just purchase this grow big plan once and for all your future websites, you don't have to purchase a new plan or a new hosting. You can host all your websites in one single hosting plan. So this is really important and really amazing feature. Now, the second thing that you should see is how much web space do you get with that plan? For example, in startup plan, you're getting 10 GB in grow big, you're getting 20 and in go geek, you're getting 40 GB of web space. Now, let me explain you how much web space do you actually need? So if you see this website, this entire website that you see on your screen, all the different products, including all the different pages, media, everything, this entire website is not more than 200 MB. So basically, if you select this thing and if you calculate this thing, so basically you can create more than 100 websites with this plan. So you can create more than 100 similar websites like this one using the grow big plan. So that is really amazing. Now, the most important thing about this plan is that these guys at SiteGround, these guys are using the SSD plan or SSD storage to host and to store your website. Now, most of the companies out there in the market, they use the HDD plan. Now, HDD is very, very slow. So if your website is hosted on HDD server, your website speed and performance will be really bad. But here at SiteGround, because these guys are using the SSD plan and that to the best quality, the fastest SSD servers to store your website. When your website is hosted on SiteGround, your website speed and performance is really amazing. And this, according to me, is the most important feature of SiteGround. Now, the third thing over here is just to give you an idea about which plan is better for what kind of website. For example, startup plan is better for those websites that get around 10,000 monthly visitors. Grow big plan is best suited for those websites that get around 25,000 unique monthly visitors. And Go Geek is best suited for those websites that, can, that generate around 100,000 monthly visitors. Now, many people get confused over here. They think that this is the upper limit. They think that if you, for example, if you select the grow big plan and if your website is getting more than 25,000 monthly visitors, they think that SiteGround will ask you or ask them to upgrade to go geek plan. But that is not the case. This is just to give you an idea. So if you select grow big plan and even if your website is getting more than 50, 60,000 monthly visitors, still grow big plan can easily handle your website. You don't have to worry about that. Now, after that, you also get unmetered traffic or unlimited bandwidth. So there is no upper limit on the data transfer. So you can uh, you can download and you can upload unlimited data from your website. You also get free SSL certificate. So if you see my demo website, this logpad that you see all over here, this is the SSL certificate. If you click on that, it says connection is secure. And this is very important, especially for an e-commerce website. This is an e-commerce website. If you don't have an SSL certificate, you cannot accept payments on your website. So that is very important. Then after that, you also get free daily backups and free CDN. Now CDN improves the security of your website. And even if something happens to your website, even if your website gets hacked or something gets attacked by some hacker or some attacker, still you have the daily backup. You can easily restore your website using this backup. Now we also get free email account and this is a professional business email account. So instead of something regular like nayar at gmail.com or nayar at yahoo.com, you can create a professional business email account like admin at your website name.com, support at google.com, those kind of you know email accounts. And you can manage those email accounts from your backend. 
Then after that you get unlimited databases which is also very important and some important features like on demand backup copies, speed boosting, caching, staging and add collaborators. So you can get all these options. So basically for most of you guys I always recommend you to just start with the grow big plan. This according to me is the best plan to start with. So simply select this plan and click on this get plan button. Now when you click on that get plan button you will be redirected to this page and here you have to register a new domain name. So whatever domain name you want to register simply type in that domain name and after that you can select a domain name extension. So the most popular one is .com. Obviously you should also try to get a .com if you don't get .com. Go with .net. If you don't get .net, go with some country specific. For example, if your website is for India, for example, I'm from India. So for me, best suited is .in, uh, which is the domain name extension for India. And for New Zealand, it is NZ. You know, for UK, it is UK. Those kind of thing. You also have some generic domain name extensions available. For example, .online, .blog, .shop, .shoes, those kind of domain name extensions. So simply type in the domain name that you want to register. Select the perfect domain name extension and click on this proceed button. Now if you have already registered a domain name somewhere else, for example many people register a domain name mostly on GoDaddy or Namecheap type of website, then you can select the second option. I already have a domain name. Now enter that domain name which you have registered on GoDaddy or any other website and click on proceed. Now you'll see this page. So here first of all you have your account information. Now in your account information you have to enter your email address and you have to enter a password or you have to choose a password and obviously under confirm password just enter the same password. Now remember one thing this is very important. So whatever email address and password you enter under account information this email address and password will become your login credentials. So next time whenever you want to log into SiteGround cPanel or dashboard you will be asked this email address and password. So make sure whatever email address and password you enter over here make sure you remember this thing. Write it down somewhere if you want. Then after that you have your client information which is just your basic information like your country name, first name, last name, your address, phone number, those kind of basic information. Now these two things are not compulsory so you can leave them company name and tax ID. Then when you scroll down you have your payment information. In your payment information you just have to enter your credit card, debit card or your simple ATM card number, card expiry date, CVV number which is a three digit number which is given at the back of your card and obviously your card holder name. Now one thing to note over here is that only three types of cards are accepted over here. Visa, Mastercard and American Express. So make sure you have one of these. If you don't have, for example, many people in India have the Rupee card, which is a domestic card, which is a state sponsored card. So if you have a Rupee card, you cannot make the payment in it. Okay, you cannot make the payment over here because with the with that card, because it is a domestic card, you cannot make the payment outside that country, which is outside India. So you must have a Visa or Mastercard. If you have a Rupee card, simply go visit your bank branch and they will exchange your card or they will upgrade your card to Visa or a Mastercard within seven days. Then when you scroll down, you have your purchase information. You don't have to change anything. You just have to check everything. So under plan, it will be it should be Grobic plan, which we have selected under data center location. It will be Asia. You can change this thing, but that is not at all recommended. So this is just the nearest data center location to your country. Then we have the period by default it is 12 months. I also recommend 12 months and you should not change this thing because if you change this thing you will have to pay some extra money. Now scroll down at the bottom and tick mark these two things. Now if you see over here if you notice over here we have to pay the total amount that we have to pay for one complete year of hosting is just $71. So this is really amazing because in my experience SiteGround is the number one hosting provider and for the number one hosting provider for one complete year of unlimited hosting you're getting it for just $71 which is really amazing. So once you you know fill in all this all your information simply go ahead at the bottom and click on pay now. Now once you make the payment you have to open a new tab and type in my.siteground.com and here first of all you have to enter the email address that you have entered or that you have selected in your previous step under account information. So under account information whatever email address and password you have selected type in the same email address and password over here and click on login. Then you will see this page and here you have to click on this websites option. Now when you click on this option you will see all the different websites, all the different domain names that you have connected with SiteGround. Now if you remember we had selected this domain name. 
nayashik.com so whatever domain name you have selected you will always see your domain name over here and below your domain name you will see this button site tools click on that button now here there can be two scenario for example the first scenario can be that you have just registered a new domain name so that is really amazing because you don't have to do any extra steps and the second scenario is that you have already registered your domain name with some other website for example with godaddy namecheap google domains or any other domain provider website and if you want to connect that domain name or if you want to link your domain name with siteground let me show you how you can do that so for that you have to open a new tab and go to that website wherein where you have registered your domain name in this example i'm going to godaddy and obviously just sign into your account now when you sign into your account you will see all the different domain names that you have registered with this account so for example if i want to use maybe this website tritongifts.com so if i want to use this domain name if i want to link this domain name with siteground besides every single domain name you will see this dns button click on that button now you'll see this page scroll down and you will see your name servers click on change now delete both these name servers from here so simply select them delete them go back to your website scroll down and here you will see your own custom name server so copy your name server number one paste it under line one copy your name server number two and obviously come over here paste it under line two and click on save now when you click on save it can take up to 24 hours to propagate these settings so it can take up to 24 hours to link your domain name with siteground and by that time we can do some more things for example we can install ssl certificate on our domain name so you can select this option security from the left hand side under that you will see ssl manager select that option now from here first of all you have to select the domain name on which you want to install ssl so in this example for me it is leumice2.nashik.com under select SSL select this option let's encrypt and after that just click on this get button and within two minutes SSL certificate will be successfully installed on your domain name and once it is done you will see your domain name at the bottom so as you can see for me this domain name is showing at the bottom and besides this domain name it says active which means that SSL is already activated on this domain name so I don't have to do this step now once SSL is successfully activated on your domain name, now you can install WordPress on that domain. So to do that from the left hand side, click on WordPress, click on install and manage. And let's see what we have to do. Now here you will see two different options, WordPress and WordPress plus WooCommerce. Just select the first option. Now again, select the domain name on which you want to install WordPress. Leave the installation path. So whatever it is, however it is, just leave it. Don't do anything over here. And if you see this thing tick mark install wordpress starter just untick this thing this is a software or a plugin that we don't need so this is just some extra plugin we don't need that so make sure that is unticked now here you have to choose a username for yourself so whatever username you want simply select that and you also have to choose a password and under email address obviously simply enter your email address your you know personal email address and again at the bottom make sure this thing is also not tick mark if it is tick mark just untick this thing both this thing and this thing at the bottom should be unticked now what you have to do is you have to click on install and installation of wordpress will start on this domain name now if you click on this install button and if you get some error then you can scroll down and see whether that domain name is present at the bottom so for example if this domain name is already present at the bottom it simply means that wordpress is automatically or already installed on this domain name so you don't have to do this thing you can you can simply click on this button log into admin panel and you will go to your dashboard but for me it is not yet installed so let me install that so click on this button install now button now WordPress has started installing on that domain name. This is a very short, very simple process. So this generally takes around 10 to 12 seconds. So let's wait. All right, now as you can see, this is 100% installed. So WordPress is installed on this domain name. Now if I scroll down, I can see this domain name is now present. Leumice2.nashik.com And besides this domain name, you will see this button, log into admin panel. Click on this button. Now you will see a new tab is opened and here you will see your dashboard. Now this page is your dashboard page and this is the most important page of your website. 
because from this page you will be controlling everything whether you want to change the design of your website whether you want to add or delete some functionalities some features from your website if you want to create posts create pages everything will be done from here you will be controlling your website from this page and whenever you want to come to this page or whenever you want to visit your dashboard simply type in your website name and after that put forward slash wp hyphen admin as you can see on your screen now before we proceed further whenever you install wordpress on a new domain name there are a few basic things that we have to understand and there are a few basic settings that we have to do first of all from the left hand side if you see wordpress updates if you see any updates over here click on that updates option and make sure to first update that theme or that plugin so here in this case this is a theme that we need to update so to update this thing tick mark over here click on update themes and this will update this theme or plugin whatever it is it will update it for you now once you, it is done again come back to dashboard now as you can see we don't have any updates available now you can do one thing at the left hand side you will see all the different options available first option is post option if you click on that option you will see one post is already created for you hello world you can delete this post from here because this is a dummy post and if you want to create a new blog a new post you can simply click on this add new button and you can do that if you see the second option which is media option here you can manage your medias you can upload videos images everything from here and you can manage them from here then we have the pages option which is obviously useful to manage and to create pages then we have the comments option which is useful or which is used to manage comments to approve unapprove delete or mark your comments as spam whatever you want to do with that then we have a very important option appearance option if you click on this option you will see there are few themes which are automatically and already installed and activated for you now let me do one thing let me open this website in a new tab now as you can see this is how this website is looking right now and this is because of this theme 2020 theme if i do one thing for example if i just go ahead and select this theme 2017 theme if i just activate this theme from here and if i again come back to my website and refresh it now as you can see just by changing the theme the entire design of the website is changed so this is basically what a theme does a theme will change the design the style the appearance of your website now we just need only one theme we, there should all, only be one theme always activated so rest all the extra themes you can just delete them so click on them and at the bottom left uh, at the bottom right you will see delete button select delete now we don't want to use this 2017 theme later on we'll be using some uh, some other free theme now from the left hand side you will see plugins click on that now over here you should see one plugin is already installed and activated for you sg optimizer now this is a very important plugin because this plugin will furthermore improve the performance of your website it will optimize the website and this plugin is only available for side ground users so if you're using some other hosting you might not see this plugin now what is a plugin a plugin is a software or a, pl a plugin is kind of an add-on or a software that will add some extra features and functionalities to your wordpress website let me give you an example for example here if you see we have this designer editor design editor option if you click on that you can design the product you can do all those things but here right now by default we don't have that function available on our website so to add that function we will be using a plugin later on in this video and that plugin that software will add all the product designing features and functionalities to your wordpress website so that is what it does then at the left hand side you will see settings click on that and here first of all you have to change your site title so if you see my wordpress or my blog simply delete this thing and just to type in the title of your website so i'm just typing in product design over here you can type in the company name your personal name whatever you want then after that we have the website tagline so here you just have to describe your website in few words then we have wordpress address and site address now if you see at at present right now it says not secure your connection to this website is not secure and that is because of this http so make sure first you make it https both at top and bottom make it https this will secure your website so once you save the settings you will be logged out you will have to log in again and this will make this website secure and after that you have your admin email address if you see some random email address over here delete that enter your personal email address make sure this thing is tick mark anyone can register so that customers can come to your website they can create our they can create an account they can register on your website then you can control the website time zone so for me it is 
Kolkata time zone. I can just search for that. Here it is. Now go at the bottom and just click on save changes. And as I said to you earlier, you will be logged out. You have to log in again. And now as you can see, if you see over here, now this time it says connection is secure. Now under settings, you have permalinks. Click on that and make sure post name is selected. If you have day and name or month and name or some other thing selected, just select the post name. Go ahead and click on save changes. Now again, let's come back to dashboard. Now, whenever you come to dashboard, you will see these extra widgets. So you can click on screen options and you can just hide all of these. Now, later on, we'll be using and we will be inserting some useful widgets over here. Right now, these widgets, these are some promotional widgets, not very important. So we can just skip them. All right, guys. So with this, all the basic settings related to your website is now completed. All right, guys. So right now, if you see, this is how your website looks like. Now, what we want to do is we want to convert this boring website into something amazing like this one. So we basically need to change the design of our website. And to do that, I have explained you earlier to change the design and appearance of your website. You come back to your dashboard, click on appearance from the left hand side and you click on this option, add new. Now for this, we'll be using a free theme. So under search themes, just search for ocean WP. Now you should see this theme over here, ocean WP theme, just click on install. And obviously once it is installed, just click on this activate button. Now, once you activate this theme, you will see a new notice at the top. You can simply click on this notice or you can simply click on this link, dismiss this notice, click on this link. And now we can also get rid of this extra 2017 theme. So you can just delete that. Now, once we have this theme, now we can install some more free plugins that will help us to do some more things. So for that, from the left hand side, hover over plugins and click on add new. Now over here under search plugin again, search for Ocean WP. So Ocean WP is an organization, a com community or a company, whatever you want to call it. They have created this amazing Ocean WP free theme and with that they have also created few free plugins. So we want to use that. So first of all, the most important one is this Ocean Extra. So click on install now. Then when you scroll down, we have Ocean product sharing. So if you see, if you open any product, you will see that product sharing at the bottom. So if you scroll down, you will see this product sharing. This is what the ocean product sharing is. Then we have ocean social sharing. So if you open any blog, you will see that social share buttons at the bottom of any particular blog. So if I open this one, if I scroll down, as you can see these, uh, these share icons. All right. If you want sticky header, there is one for sticky header as well. Let me see that. This is the one ocean WP sticky header. If you want to make your header sticky, you can install this one as well. Now don't activate any one of these plugins. We can activate all of them at once. So just to save some time. Now we need a plugin for contact form. So just search for contact because if you see your demo website in the contact page, in the contact us page, you will see a form over here like this. So you can use any plugin to create this form. We will be using this plugin contact form seven. Just click on install now. Now under search plugins, search for Elementor. Elementor kit basically, search for Elementor kit. Now when you search for Elementor kit, you will see this first option, Elements kit Elementor add-ons by WP Met. Install this one as well. And once this is installed, we want to install, once this installation is completed, we want to install the final plugin, which is the WooCommerce plugin, which is also very, very important plugin. So search for WooCommerce, you should see this option install this plugin. Now, once all these plugins are installed, you can click on plugins from the left hand side. Here you'll see all those installed plugins. Now we can activate all of them at once. So simply tick mark over here under bulk action, select activate. And after that, just click on apply. All right, guys. So now as you can see, all your plugins are now successfully activated. Now, once you activate these plugins, you will see several notices at top. Most of them are not important. So you can just click on skip and you can cut and dismiss these notices. Click on dismiss, 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 dismiss this one. Just don't dismiss this one. This is really important. WooCommerce setup wizard. So you will see this option. You will see this button run the setup wizard. Click on this button and you should see a page like this. If you don't see this page or if you don't see that button, you can simply type in your website name. After that, put a forward slash WP hyphen admin forward slash admin dot PHP question mark page is equal to WC hyphen setup. Whatever you see on your screen, just type in that thing. You should see this page. Now click on yes, please. And you should see this page. Now here you just have to enter your address. So this is the 
uh, company address so your office address or those kind of address so just enter your address from here and click on continue again click on continue now what kind of store is this so this is related to fashion apparel and accessories because we'll be selling those kind of products so uh, select that option and click on continue now what kind of products will you be creating and listing so we will be creating physical products so I'm selecting the first one and after that again click on continue now these things that I'm doing right now this is these things are really not very useful or these does not impact your website uh, in any ways this is just a simple uh, survey kind of thing that WooCommerce does just to understand the people who are using WooCommerce you know much better and they can improve their plugin now how many products do you plan to sell so maybe 11 to 100 and are you currently selling anywhere else so we are not selling uh, anywhere and after that they will recommend you a few extra plugins which we don't need obviously just click on continue now they will again re recommend you a few free themes and premium themes we just want to continue with ocean wp so click on continue with my active theme now make sure you don't uh, select yes please because this is recommending you and this is asking you to install another plugin which is not very useful for us so we can just click on no thanks now this is completed we can cut this thing now what this will do is if you go and click on pages and click on skip now here you will see let let this thing load again click on pages now here as you can see cart page checkout page my account page and shop page these four pages are created because of that thing that we just did because of that WooCommerce quick setup these four pages are created so by default uh, if you don't see these pages over here for example if you did this uh, if you did this entire process still you don't see cart page checkout page my account page to fix this problem there is another short video on my channel you can just go to YouTube and search for you know something like Nayar Shake WooCommerce pages those kind of thing you will get that video now sample page is a just a dummy page so we can delete that but I guess now once the quick setup of WooCommerce is completed now we can do the main WooCommerce settings so to do that from the left hand side search for WooCommerce hover over that and click on settings now the first option over here is the general settings so we have already set the address obviously if you want you can update your address from here now to which all countries or locations will will you be selling to so I'll be selling to specific countries obviously you should not be selecting sell to all countries especially if you are selling physical products for example if someone orders a t-shirt from some other country for example from Nigeria or from Russia or some you know far away country which is very difficult for someone sitting in India for them it is very difficult to deliver a product to that country so you should not be selling so people may, might come from that country they can place an order and after that you're not able to sell you're not able to ship the product so that is not a good thing so you should be selling to specific countries that is the best option mostly you should be selling only to your country that is the best option according to me so select this option sell to specific countries and now name all the countries that you will be selling to maybe in India and maybe in United States only two countries all right obviously you can select more you can select less if you want to select only India you can do that as well now let this setting be shipped to all countries you sell to and if you want to enable taxes just tick mark this thing enable taxes and calculations if you want you can change the currency for example we can set this to US dollar or if you want you can set this to you know Indian rupee Pakistani rupee any currency you want now click on save changes then after that you can skip or you can just click on products let's see and uh, no important not very useful settings available over here just go to tax let's see how taxation can be done now by default two tax rates are available zero rate and reduced rate if you want to create one more or few more so you can do that so click on over here and press enter you will come on new line if you want just a, if you if you ha, if you're selling a product for example if you're selling only t-shirts then for you you should be creating only one tax class because tax on all kind of t-shirt will be same for example if the taxation on t-shirt is 10 percent it will be 10 percent on all t-shirt but if you're selling multiple products or different types of products for example you're selling t-shirts but you're also selling mobile phones then you're also selling you know different kind of things you can create multiple tax rates as well 
So if you want to create multiple tax rates, just type in that thing. For example, in India, we are following GST. So I'll type in GST 10 for 10% 10 tax and GST maybe 12 for 12% 12 tax. Okay, so I'm, I'll am i just, just name it or just type in this thing. Don't do anything for now. Just click on save changes. Now, once you do that, now you will see two new options available at top GST 10 rates, GST 12 rates. First click on GST 10 rates, click on insert row. Now under country code, you have to just type in your country name or just search for your country name. If, for example, if I type in I N, I get this India option. If I click on that, this is my country code. All right. Now skip this state code, postal code, city, everything. Just come to rate and type in 10 percentage because as you can see, we are under GST 10. Under tax class name, I'll name it GST 10 so that I know that this is 10 percent GST and untick this shipping. Click on save changes. It is that easy. Your taxation setting is now completed. Now go to GST 12 rates, insert row, follow the same steps. India country code, go to rate 12 percent or name will be GST 12 and we can just untick this shipping and click on save changes and your taxation settings are completed. Now go to shipping. Now here you have to create different shipping zones. Now if you remember under general setting, if you again go back to your general setting, here as you can see I have done, I have, I'm selling to two countries, India and USA and obviously the shipping cost for India will be totally different from the shipping cost from USA. So here that is all, all the shipping changes are done over here, all the shipping settings are done over here. So you have to create different shipping zones and you have to set different pricing for these zones. Okay. So for example, let me show you, click on add shipping zone. Now let me add a shipping zone for India. So I'll name it India and under region I'll search for India. You can have different, uh, you know, different uh, shipping rates for different states in India. I don't want to do that much specific, but if you want to learn about more specific details, again, you can go to YouTube and search for Naya Sheikh WooCommerce. So I've done a very detailed video only on this plugin, WooCommerce plugin and all these settings in more detail. So if you want after creating or after watching this video, you can watch that video as well. Now let's set that rate. So click on add shipping method, flat rate, add shipping method, edit this thing and whatever rate. For example, if you are, if you want to charge maybe $5, so just type in five. But if you just type in five, there is one problem. If a person comes and orders one product, they will be charged $5 uh, dollars shipping. If the same person maybe purchases more than hundred products, still they will be charged only $5 because they, this is the uh, rate that we are setting over here. So to fix this problem, what you can do is type in 5.00 or if you if you want to set $10, 10.00. If you want to set $2, $2.00, give a space, asterisk, space and under square brackets, type in QTY. You can see this thing on your screen or if you just hover over this question mark, you can see that formula over here as well. All right, now this will do is, the now what this will do is this will multiply the quantity with five. So if the person is purchasing one product, the, it will be $5, five into one. If the person is purchasing three products, it will be five into quantity, which is three, $15. So this is how this thing will work. After that, click on save changes. Now this is how shipping is created. But if you're again, if you're selling different types of products, maybe shipping cost for different products will be different. For example, shipping cost for refrigerator will be totally different from the shipping cost for mobile phone because obviously the size, bulkiness, all those things differs. So if you want to do that, you can go to shipping classes and you can create different classes. So I can click on add shipping class. Maybe I'll, I'll create two classes, t-shirts. I'll just type in t-shirts, click on, uh, save shipping classes, click on add shipping class again and mugs. So maybe I am, I'm creating two classes. So my shipping rate for mugs will be different and shipping rates for t-shirts will be different. Again, go back to shipping zones, India, edit India, edit flat rate. And now as you can see, we have some more options, mugs, t-shirts, no shipping cost. Now under cost, we had type in this thing. Now you can cut this thing from here and paste this thing under no shipping cost. So when there is no class selected, no shipping class selected, this will be your default shipping price. All right. You will understand these things in more detail in much better way later on when we create a product after we do these settings. Now for mugs, I want to paste in the same thing, but I want to change the price. So for mugs, I want to charge maybe $7.
and for t-shirts I want to charge maybe uh, let's see six dollars all right so this is how this settings will look now click on save changes and with this your shipping settings are also completed now let's go to payments now by default you have cash on delivery if you want to enable cash on delivery you can simply tick mark this thing cash on delivery will be enabled if you want to enable PayPal tick mark this thing click on save changes and now besides PayPal it you should see this button manage button click on manage now you can change the title and you can change the description enter your PayPal email address scroll down and here you have to enter your over here at the bottom you have to enter your API credentials so your API username password and signature so to get this thing you have to go to paypal.com obviously log into your account now once you log into your account you can do one thing you can type in this thing in your url bar paypal.com slash business manage slash credentials slash api access and a in access is capital you can see that link in the video description you can see that link on your screen now type in that thing and press enter you will see this page your api credentials page now scroll down and Select this option NVP SOAP API integration, click on manage API credentials. Now here you will get all the details that you need. For example, the first one is your API username. Click on show, copy your username from here and obviously paste it under live API username. Similarly, just hide this thing, click on show, copy your password, paste it under password, then copy your signature and paste it under signature. I'll have to hide these things. Alright guys, so as you can see, I have successfully copied and pasted my API username, password and signature. Once you do that, just click on save changes. Alright, now this payment uh, uh, settings are now done. Again, go back to payments. Now I want to do one more thing. Now with PayPal, a person must have a PayPal account only then they can make the payment. And PayPal does accept credit card and debit card payments, but that is not the best way. If you want to accept credit card and debit card payments right on your website, because through PayPal, even if the person wants to make payment through credit card or debit card, they have to go to PayPal.com. They will be redirected to PayPal.com and they will make the payment over there. But there is a way through which you can accept credit card, debit card, ATM card payments right on your website. Let me show you how you can do that. So for that we need a new plugin. So hover over plugins, click on add new. Now under search plugins, search for Stripe and select this option, the first option. WooCommerce Stripe Payment Gateway by WooCommerce. Install this thing. Just click on install now as you can see more than 700,000 active installations. So more than 700,000 websites are actively in using this plugin. And this is compatible with your version of WordPress and very recently updated. Now once this is installed, just click on activate to obviously activate the plugin. And again, whichever notice you get, just delete that. Now again, hover over WooCommerce, click on settings and go to payments. Now you should see many new options. So you can accept these payment gateways as well. I just want to select this option, the default option, Stripe credit card. As you can see, credit card Stripe, enable this option. Go at bottom, click on save changes. Now besides this, you will see this manage button, click on that. Now what you should do is first of all under title, delete this stripe and I want to type in credit card slash debit card, credit slash debit card, pay with your credit card via stripe. I want to delete this via stripe. You will see how the, where this title and description will be displayed very soon. Now make sure this thing is not tick mark enable test mode, make sure this is unticked because we, we don't want test mode, we want live mode. Now we need to get our publishable key and secret key. So to get this thing, open a new tab and go to dashboard.stripe.com. And again, obviously make sure you log in to your Stripe account. Now, once you do that from the left hand side, you will see developers, click on that. And under that, you will see API access again, click on that. Now, first option is your publishable key. So copy your publishable key from here and paste it under live publishable key. Now click on reveal live key token. Again, I'll have to hide this thing. Now copy and paste in your live secret key over here. All right. Once you do that, just go at the bottom and click on save changes. And with this, your stripe is also completed. Now let's see some more settings related to WooCommerce. So click on accounts and privacy. And tick mark this thing, allow customers to log into an existing account during checkout. 
allow customers to create an account during checkout, allow customers to create an account on the My Account page. Make sure all these things are tick mark. Now go at the bottom and click on Save Changes. Then I don't think we have anything important over here. So with this and uh, finally just go to advanced option and make sure under cart page cart is selected under checkout page checkout and under my account page my account is selected and after that again click on save changes and with this your WooCommerce settings are also done. Okay everything is now completed. Now what we need to do is we need to install a new plugin because right now we don't have the functionality of what, you know, product design thing uh, we cannot design a product or anything. So first we need to install a new plugin that will enable us to design our products. Now to get this plugin you have to open a new tab and type in blogtocom slash Leumize. Again this link is also given in the video description below so you can simply click on that link and you should be redirected to this page. Product designer for WooCommerce WordPress Leumize. When you scroll down you can see more than 3000 sales and average rating of 4.86 which is really amazing rating. And you can see all the different features available of this plugin. So you can use this plugin to you know design or to uh, for the product designing of basic hoodies, sneaker, mug, card, cap, bag, basic t-shirt, sticker, all these things. And you can see all the different features, all the amazing features at the bottom. You can scroll down and you can go through all the features. Now what we need to do is you need to purchase this plugin. Because this is a premium plugin and as you can see the price is $59 but the best thing over here is that this is one time payment which means that you don't have to you know for, for example you just paid this you just paid $59 over here and you purchase this theme or this plugin now you can have this plugin for lifetime you don't have to make yearly payments or any kind of payments again. And even if this plugin gets updated in future you will keep on receiving those updates for lifetime. So you need to purchase this plugin so just click on buy now or add to cart and make uh, make the payment. Once you purchase this plugin you will see this link at the top right corner your username hover over that and click on downloads. Now here you should see this plugin over here product designer Lumice. Click on download click on all files and documentation. Now a new zip file will start downloading. I will cancel this thing because I already have this zip file. Now again come back to your dashboard. Click on plugins. Now let me first open that file that we have just downloaded. Alright, So this is the file that we just downloaded. This is a zip file. So once you download this file what you should do is this is because this is a, a zip file archive file. You should uh, right click on this and click on extract files. When you do that you will get a new folder with the same name. Open that folder. You will get another folder inside that, open that and inside that you will see a new zip file, a smaller zip file. So this is the zip file that we have to upload on our website. So click on add new, upload plugin, choose file and choose that file that I just showed you. Open that folder, inside this another folder and now we have this plugin file. Select this file, click on open, click on install now. Now this plugin is getting installed and you can obviously see the progress at the bottom left screen of your browser of your Google Chrome browser if you're using. Again so once this is successfully installed just click on activate plugin. Now once it is activated you will see at the left hand side you have a new option Leumice option. Now hover over that or you can just click on Leumice you will see the dashboard which would look something like this alright. It will show how many clip arts, how many templates, how many orders and shapes you have. So we do have shapes, we have 93 shapes but right now we don't have any clip arts or any templates. So that is a problem. If you click on design templates, click on all templates, we don't have any. If you click on clip arts, click on all clip arts, again we don't have any clip arts. So let me show you how you can import pre-made demos, pre-made templates and also you know clip arts. So to do that you have to open a new tab and go to docs.leumice.com Alright, just go to this website docs.leumice.com Now over here at the right hand side you should see this page Sample Data WooCommerce, this link, click on that link and now you should see this page. Now what we you have to do is you have to do, you have to download two files from here. First file is this link given over here woo.sql, click on this and this will bring you to dropbox.com and here you will see a file you have to download this file. Now this is taking some time to load this file we don't need to load this file just we just need to download this file. So click on download, click on direct download. 
and now as you can see this file is downloaded then after that you can cut this thing and we have another file which is this one another link okay again click on this link now you will see a zip file sample zip file again just click on download direct download make sure you download this sample file as well all right guys, so for me both the files are successfully downloaded so as you can see over here this is the woo.sql file and this is the sample zip file so first of all let's open this woo.sql file so by default you can open this with uh, notepad so if you select this option right click on this click on open with notepad but this will look really ugly and it becomes very difficult to make changes on you know these kind of files if you're using notepad now there are many free version or many free file editors or text editors available that you can use for example here as you can see i'm using sublime text so you can just go to google and search for sublime text 3 and you can download this sublime text once you download it download it and install it you will get this option now right click on this open with and select sublime text and this will look so much better colorful and we have many more features available over here now we need to do one small change on this file okay you have to do this thing you will see over here everywhere this website link replace with your domain.com select that much and press control h on your website okay control h h for horse control h on your website and now as you can see this much is selected replace with your domain name.com now instead of this just type in your domain name so for me it is this domain name whatever your domain name is all right type it over here now make sure if HTTPS is not selected and no extra things are selected for example for example this ends with com so this also should end with com no extra uh, slash or anything should be uh, should come over here and again HTTPS is not selected so here also HTTPS and anything like that should not be selected just whatever you see on a screen just do it like that so this much is selected replace with your domain name.com and just replace with uh, replace that with your simple domain name now once you select the once you do these things after that at the bottom right corner you will see replace all click on that and now as you can see all these domain names are now replaced with your website name wherever you go you will see this thing now once you do that press ctrl s to save this file now cut this file now once you have made changes to this file now we have to import this file in the mysql in the database let me show you that is very easy sounds complicated but very easy now again go to my.sideground.com basically go to your sideground c panel again click on websites and we are dealing with nayeshik.com so select this website click on site tools now once you come over here you will see at the left hand side site click on this option site option and here you will see my sql click on my sql and from here you will see another option my php my admin click on php my admin and click on this button access php my admin now you'll see a new tab will be opened now here you what you have to do you have to search for the database name of your website for example the database name of this website whatever the website you're using i'm using lumis2.nashik.com now how will you know because database names are you know like this as you can see let me show you at the left hand side as you can see these are the database name db6 all you know many different characters something like this so it is very difficult to know the database name and everything from here but if you want to know that let me show you how you can do that again come back to this page your SiteGround C panel and under site click on file manager and search for your website name which is lumice2.nashik.com select public html and here you'll see a file let's see wpconfig.php double click on that file when you double click on that file it will open when you scroll down you will see your database name db name very right at the top as you can see db name and here as you can see this is your database name and at the end it says sqq okay so i have to search for this so let's see here as you can see the first one the very first one ends with sqq so i'll click on this database now this means that this database is related to this website name uh, this website lumis2.nayashik.com 
So I can click on this SQQ database name, which is the very first one. And here we have to import that file that we have made changes to. So we can click on this option import. Now select that file. So click on choose file and let me just choose that file, which was over here. This is the file. I'll select that file, click on open, go at the bottom, click on go. All right, guys. Now, as you can see, this file is successfully uploaded or successfully uh, imported, I would say. Now, once it is imported again, if you come back over here and right now, earlier we were seeing no data. If I again click on uh, all clip parts. Now, as you can see, all the data is now available. Even if I click on templates, all templates, you also you will see all the data is now available. But there is one thing not available. These images, the media is not available. We only have the database, the number name and everything, the chart and all these tables, but we don't have the image. So let's see how we can fix this thing as well. So again, come back to your file manager and let's cut this thing. So you'll see WP config file. You'll see this cut button, cut this thing. That file is gone. Uh, I mean, we have closed that file. The file is still there, not gone. Now under lumais2.nearshake.com again, click on public HTML. Now open this folder WP content under that open uploads and, uh, and under that open Lumais data. All right. Now here you have to upload that zip file, the sample.zip file that you have you know, used that you have downloaded. So to upload a file, you will see this option over here, file upload, click on this and select this sample dot zip, uh, zip file, select this, click on open. You can see the progress over here, as you can see at the bottom, let it load. All right, guys, so this file is successfully uploaded. Now you should see this file, zip file. Now, before I extract this file, let me show you one thing. Let me tell you one thing. I see only one folder over here, add-ons folder. There are chances that you might see more than one folder, more than add-ons folder. So what you should do, let me explain you. For example, if I go to this uh, other website, demo website, lumais.nearshake.com, go to public HTML, WP content, uh, uploads, Lumais data. And now as you can see, you might see several folders like this. Now you should see, you should delete three folders if they already exist. Clip arts. So if you already see clip arts folder, delete that. Then templates. If you already see templates folder, select this and click on this dustbin icon. It will delete it. Second, this was the second folder and third folder is thumbnails. Select this and click on delete. So you make sure you delete these three folders if it is already available for you. Okay. So most of the times so it should not be, it should not be that case. So again, I'll come back over here, go to public HTML, WP content, uploads, Lumis data. And here we have only one folder, but if you have, uh, if you see over here, the templates folder, thumbnail folder and clip arts folder, delete all three. Now select this zip file that you have downloaded, right click on this and select extract. Now when you click on extract, you should see a new folder, sample folder, open this. And inside this, you will see all these files. Now what I, I want to do is I want to select everything. So click on this, press control and select everything like this. And we need, we have to move these folders. So click on this option, move and delete this delete sample from here. So right now your location says your website name lumais2.nearshake.com slash public HTML slash WP content as you can see slash upload slash Lumais data slash sample, which means that under Lumais data, it is under sample folder, delete sample from here. We want to bring this under Lumais data folder. Now click on confirm. Now this will cut it from here. Let me show you. All these files will be cut from here. And now as you can see, this folder is now empty. And if you go to Lumais data, here you have clip arts, here you have templates and also thumbnails. So basically you can see that from here, it, if you see my, what I have, whatever I've highlighted, your website name, public HTML, WP content uploads. And after that Lumais data and under Lumais data, you should see this clip arts folder, templates folder and thumbnail folder. All right. This should fix your problem. Now let me just delete this sample zip file because that is no more required. Now, if I again come back to this website, now we were not seeing these thumbnails. If I again refresh it, let's see what happens. 
Now, as you can see, all these thumbnails are now available. If I go to clip arts, click on all clip arts, these clip arts are also available. So this is how this thing is fixed. I know this thing was a little bit technical, but it is very easy. You can see if you don't understand, you can see this portion again. It is very easy and also you will learn many things over here. I hope you have learned some new things over here, how to open file manager, how to do these settings and how to do some basic settings or basic changes in your you know, database. So these two things were very important. Now we have everything that we need. And now we can go through all the settings related to Lumice. So let's start with dashboard. So click on dashboard and under dashboard, you have several options. Click on home. Now under home, you will see now as you can see, instead of zero clip arts, it says 3322 clip arts, 311 templates, no orders yet. We'll see how a new order is placed and how everything happens. So all these things are now available. Now click on product base, all product base. So by default, all these product base are already created for you for stickers, sneakers, pillow, phone case, hoodies or sweatshirts, hat, cup, all these products base are created. How to use this? We'll very soon see that. We have seen templates, clip art, shapes. Now under printing type, click on all printing type. No printing types are created. Now, if, if you are, if you have multiple machines, multiple, you know, technologies for printing or an embroidery you can create different types and you can have different pricing different rates for different types for example for embroidery it can be a little bit expensive the same design can be expensive for embroidery and for screen printing it can be a little bit cheaper so this is how this is done let's see how a printing type is created so to create a new printing type just click on this add new printing button give it any name so i'll just give it a name of dtg very common type of this thing so i'll select i'll just name it dtg under printing thumbnail choose file and upload any folder or any image of dtg so i'll select this dtg machine click on open this is the thumbnail you can add some description you can type some description and for this you can set a price all right and the price can be set based on different things for example by default it is selected a uh, price uh, calculated based on text clip arts images used. So if text is used, uh, the price of the product plus $1. If clip art is used price of the product, for example, price of the t-shirt plus $1. If a clip art is used, if custom image is used plus $1 plus if vector image is used or vector file is used $1. If custom upload file is used $1 extra. This is how this is done. And also for quantity. Now what I would do is I'll make some changes over here. For example, for text, it will be 0 0.5. Uh, so 50 cents for text. So if you have a t-shirt and if you want, if you're designing that, and if you're using text on that t-shirt, uh, you will pay 50 cents extra for clip art, maybe $1 images, $1, all vector also $1, but for custom upload, I'll charge maybe $2. This is still quantity range five. I can add more quantity range. For example, if a person purchases more than five product till 10 products, we will de decrease the price. Now we won't charge anything for text and we will decrease the price for clip art images and vector and also for upload. And again, you can add more quantity range. Now you can also calculate price based on color. For example, if quantity range till five, so till five product, if a person purchases and full color is used, we will charge maybe two or three dollars or five dollars extra, whatever amount you want to charge. Or you want to control this thing more, you can click on add new column and number of colors used. For example, till five colors, if a person is using till five colors, then maybe we will charge them one dollars. And again, here also you can add quantity range. So you can create a very, you know, very sophisticated pattern over here, very sophisticated kind of pricing structure over here. You can also calculate price based on the size uh, that is used, size of the area design that is used, or you can just have a fixed price. So I've, I'm just selecting this option, the first option, calculate price based with text, uh, images, all those things used. Now go at the bottom and click on save printing. Now, as you can see, one type is created. If I click on all printing type, DTG is created. Now you can go ahead and click on add new printing. You can click uh, create for embroidery or any type of printing and you can control the price for the same. Now you can go to fonts, click on all fonts. 
Now, here, as you can see, if you want, uh, there are a few uh, fonts which are also available, which you don't see over here, but I'll show you how those fonts looks like. So uh, on top of that, you can add your own custom fonts. All right. So that thing is also available. Now, if you click on orders right now, we don't have any orders, but once we get that, uh, once we get any order, I'll show you how to process these orders. Now go at the bottom and just click on settings. Let's see basic settings related to this option. Now the first option that we want to see is upload logo. Now let me do one thing. If you open pages in a new tab, now because we are using this Leomize uh, plugin, you should see this page over here, design editor. Click on view page and this is how this page would look like. Now here, let me show you one thing. This logo is used over here at the, at the top left corner as you can see. So instead of this logo, if you want to upload your own logo, custom logo, just select that. Now logo URL, if someone clicks on this logo, which link they should be redirected to. So basically you should just copy your homepage link or your website link and paste it over here. Now site title, what, just add any site title, fab icon, theme color. Now as you can see, this is the default theme color and this color is used throughout over here. If you want to change this theme color, for example, some other color, you can select that as well and click on save settings. Now select editor. And over here, make sure color picker is tick mark so that a person can uh, select the color. We haven't created any products. That's why we don't see that option. But color picker should be tick mark. You can have more color options over here or you can delete some color options from here. Now share option can be available. So user can share these things. User can print, user can download and all, all those components that a user can use. I am tick marking everything. Now disable resources. We don't want to disable any resources. Now minimum size upload 200 KB. No, not required. I just type in 20. You should type in at least 200 KB so that image size is pretty big and the resolution is pretty high so that the print comes nice. All right. If the resolution and the size of the image is pretty small, it will be very difficult and the print will not come very good. The quality of the print will not be really good. But I'm just increasing, decreasing the number just for demo purposes. You should make it 200. I'm making it 20. All right. No, and uh, enable this thing low resolution notice. So if a person is uploading anything below these resolutions or a low resolution file, they will get a notice and uh, rest. Everything looks fine. Just go at the bottom and click on save settings. Now click on shop and here you can change and control all your currency. Now I want the currency first. So first the currency symbol, then the price. So I want currency first. Now currency code USD United States dollar. So this is what we are selecting and uh, under editor page by default, it is cart select design editor. Very, very important under editor page, make sure design editor is selected and go at the bottom and click on save settings. Now under Google fonts, as you can see, these are the fonts which are already available for you and rest everything is fine. All right. So with this, all your Lumi settings is now completed. All right, guys, now let's do one thing. Let's again first come back to dashboard. All right, guys, now as you can see, because we are using WooCommerce, we have these two very important widgets over here. So you can see all the numbers like how many orders pending, how much sales you have done this month. You can see all those important information from here. All right, guys, now let's do one thing. Let's first create a product because still now we haven't yet created any products. So let's see how we can create a product and let's see how we can add the design editor feature in that product. So a customer or a visitor can come to your website, they can create their own custom design and they can place an order. So to do that, you have to again, make sure to come back to your dashboard and now from the left hand side, hover over products and click on add new. Now let me do one thing. Let me open a product over here in this page in the demo website so that we can see all the different settings and we can understand that setting. So I'll open this product over here or I'll just open this single product t-shirt. So first of all, this is the title of the product. So you can come over here. You can type in the, uh, you can type in the title for the product. What I'll do is I'll type in design your own t-shirt. So this will display as the title for the product. All right. Then after that, we have the short description. So what all text you want to display over here besides your product image, this will be your short description. So I'll simply copy it and paste it over here. All right. Now scroll down. 
Now here, if you see, this is the main setting related to the product because here you can set the pricing of the product. You can select the taxation, shipping, inventory settings, everything related to this product. So what I'll do is I'll first create a simple, a regular product, for example, just a regular t-shirt. And after that, once we create this product, a simple product, after that, I'll show you how we can add this customization option in that product. All right. So come back to this page, your product editing page. And here, let's give it a price. So here the price is, as you can see, $25. So I'll just enter $25 as price. If you want to give some uh, discount or uh, if this product is on sale, you can, for example, this product is on sale for $20. We are giving $5 uh, discount on this product and you can also schedule this sale. For example, this sale is uh, available till today, from today till the end of next month. All right. Then after that, we have the taxation setting. So if this product is taxable, if there is any tax levied on this product, you can select taxable and you can select the tax class. If there is no tax, if you want, if you don't want to enable taxation or if you don't want to charge any tax on this product, you can just set this to none. But obviously you should do this. I'll make it taxable and you have to select what tax class is applied on this product. So I'll select maybe GST 10. If you remember, we had created two new tax classes, GST 10 and 12. So maybe 10% tax is applied on this product. So I'll select GST 10. Now you'll go to inventory, which is the second option. You can give it an SKU, which is stock keeping unit, which is just a, which is just a, a, you know, a unique number or unique ID given to every single product. So you can give any uh, digit, for example, this can be the SKU for this product. And every product will have a very unique SKU. You cannot have two products with the same SKU, with the same stock keeping unit. Then after that, we have the third option, which is shipping option. So you have to set the weight of the product in kilograms or grams. So here it says kilograms, so I'll make it 0 0.25, all right, 250 grams. Then dimension in centimeters. So whatever the dimension is and shipping class. If you set no shipping class again, let me show you these settings so that you can understand it much better. If you remember, we had done these settings uh, under WooCommerce. If you go to shipping and if you edit this thing, if you remember, we had set uh, two, we have created two shipping classes, mugs and t-shirt and under shipping zone, if you want to see the main settings, if you edit this, no shipping cost, which is the default option will make it $5 uh, into quantity. So by default, no shipping class is selected. If you want, you can select t-shirts. So for t-shirts, it will be $6 into quantity. All right. So you can do this thing. Now, after that, you don't have to do anything else. Just go at the bottom and here is the product short description. So this is the product short description. I'll copy it and paste it over here. And what we had at the top, this is not the short description. This is the product long description. So product long description will be displayed at the bottom like this. So I'll replace this. I'll cut this text and replace it with this one. Now at the right hand side, you have to give a category to this product. So because we are creating a, uh, we are creating t-shirts, so you can create a new category t-shirts and all your future t-shirts will come under the same category. Then when you scroll down, we have the product image, which is this image. So I can upload this image from here. And as I've said you earlier, there is a link given in the video description below. If you click on that link, you will be redirected to my website. Now for every single tutorial that I create, I also create these uh, different blogs or these different articles just to give you these images and all those important links. So if you click on the link which is given in the video description, you will come and land on a similar page and you will see at bottom this link download free images. If you click on this download button, you will download a zip file. And once you extract that zip file, you will get all these files over here. So let's do one thing. Let's come back over here and let's upload these images. So I'll select everything and uh, let's see, let's upload these images. So click on open. Now these images are getting uploaded. Now, whatever image you want to set as this image, this is the featured image. You can select that image. For example, you can select, uh, set this image or you can select this image, whatever image you want to select. So in this case, I want to select this image and I want to click on this button, set product image. And once you publish this thing, this product will be published on your website. You can click on this link 
or you can open this link in a new tab and this is how your single product will look like. Now this looks really boring kind of thing, not really interesting, but later on in at the end of this video, we'll see how to design this thing and how to make it something amazing and beautiful like this one. But right now, as you can see, this is how it looks. Now this is a regular product, like this is a product you can add to cart, you can make the payment and everything. So if you don't want to create a designing product, if you don't want to create a website for product designing, if you want to create a simple e-commerce website, this is how you do it. Now if you want to enable design editor on this product, you can go back to this page, scroll down and you will see this option over here, Lumice configuration, click on this. Now once you do that, you can also hide add to cart button. So this button will disappear and you will have only the customized button. Then after that, you will click on this button, select product base and you have to select the base for the product. So this is because a t-shirt, so we'll select this thing, basic t-shirt. And now we can uh, do some changes over here. So you can click on this option, edit product base. Now, first of all, here are the basic settings like the uh, name of the product, the description and everything that we have already edited, that we have already added. Now you can come to design. This is the front design. This is the back design. All right. So if you want, you can rename the, these. Instead of untitled, you can rename this to front. And instead of this thing, again, we can rename this thing to back. All right. Now let's come back to front and you can make some changes over here. For example, you can select the size of printing. This is the default size. I can see this thing that you see on your screen. This thing is marked. This is the default size. So if you want to uh, enable printing only on a certain area, you can control that area from here like this. Okay. For example, I want to enable printing only on this area. All right. So I can select this thing or if you want to increase or decrease the size, you can do it easily. All right. Like this. And it, it will also show you the area ratio, scale ratio and everything. And if you want to do some changes, for example, size for printing, you can select the size, the paper size or that size for printing. You can export including the base, which this, which is this image, the t-shirt, but you should not do that. Uh, if you untick this thing, if you enable, first of all, if you include base, whatever, uh, whenever a person designs this thing, you will get the design so that you can put that design in your machine and you can print that t-shirt. So that design will also include this t-shirt. So we don't want to do that. So I'll just make it no. Then after that, you can go to this option variation. We haven't created any attributes. First, we have to create attributes. And after that, we can create variations. So let's come back to attributes. Now, by default, as you can see in attributes, two things are already created products and quantity or color or quantity. So what I can do is I can just delete these attributes from here and I'll add my own attribute first. Uh, first of all, I'll click on add new attribute. I'll click first one. I'll create color or colors and the attribute type will be product colors. So basically now I'm selecting all the colors in which this fabric is available. So let me first show, save this thing. So this is the fabric. This is the t-shirt. So this t-shirt is maybe available with me in several colors. So I'll have to select those colors over here. So first of all, whenever you create an attribute, you should always tick mark these two things field required and used for variation. Now let's add a new color. So click on add new color. So maybe this product is available with me. First of all, you'll see there's there are a few options already selected. So I'll delete all of them and I'll create my own color from here. So maybe with me, I have this black color. So I'll select this black color and I'll click on this option, add to list. And now as you can see, this, uh, this color is added to the list. Then after that, maybe I also have a, let's see gold colors. So I'll select gold, click on add to wish, uh, add to list. I don't want this color. So I'll delete this and let's see, maybe I also have uh, this thing available in maroon color, this t-shirt available in maroon color. So I'll select this color as well. Maybe lime green, uh, maybe forest green. Let's select. So whatever colors are available with you, you will, you will just select those colors. And after that, you will just click on apply now. And then at the end, you will see this uh, check mark icon to save these settings. Just click on that save settings and click on save product. Now, let me again edit the product base. Click on attributes. If you for some reason don't see your colors still showing over here, click on add new color. Sometimes this can take some time. So what I'll do is I'll click on select all and click on save settings. And now as you can see, these colors will show up over here. Now you can do one thing. You can also charge some extra money for the fabric of the color. For example, 
this color maybe cold color is a very it's not a very common color it's a very special color so, and the the fabric is quite expensive for this gold color thing so i can charge maybe two dollars extra so if the person is creating and designing this product and if the person wants this product this t-shirt in gold color they will have to pay two dollars extra the base price is twenty dollars so if the person selects any other color they will they will be paying twenty dollars but if the person selects this gold color t-shirt they will have to pay us two dollars extra and you can have different pricing for different colors whatever and however you like it and you can also set a default color so maybe i want to set this color as the default color then after that you can just click on save product or you can just do one thing minimize this thing and you can add a new attribute as well so i'll click on add new attribute and maybe i'll add a new attribute of size so i'll just type in size over here and from the attribute type you will select to drop down and again make sure both these things are tick mark now click on add option and maybe i want to do one thing i i'll create several sizes over here like small so small size t-shirt then after that medium and one more will be large and you can create more sizes over here so and you can also set a default so default will be medium now for this small size t-shirt i don't want to charge anything but if if the person is selecting medium size t-shirt i want to charge them maybe two dollars extra and for large uh, size t-shirt i want to charge them five dollars extra you can uh, select these things as well again click on save product just to save these settings and again click on edit product base now once you have created your attributes you can come to variations and click on this option add new variation now you can select the particular attribute and you can create your own variation for example you have to select this option default form values so maybe this gold color t-shirt is available only in medium sizes okay so i'll select gold medium and after that i'll delete this default one click on add new variation and select gold select medium and for this uh, price can be different and i'll just select 20 dollars as the regular price the base price now you can also set a minimum and maximum quantity so maybe to order this product to order this t-shirt um, a person must uh, give order of minimum 10 quantity or and maximum of maybe thousand quantities so you can control those things as well then after that this is one variation then after that i'll select uh, maybe if under basically what you should be doing is you will select each and every color like the first color is this color and after that you'll select a uh, small click on add new variation here first color first size i'll give it a price of 20 dollars and similarly you will click on add new variation now you'll select the first color second size so every color every size should be collect, uh, selected for example this color size one two three then after that you'll create create new variation second color size one two three okay like this and for each color and size combination you can have a different price and different minimum and maximum quantity number all right so i'm just creating two different options over here and after that i'll click on save product now once you do this thing you can go ahead and just click on update this product now let's see what happens what changes take place to this product so if i again come back to this product page and if i refresh this thing now as you can see the base price is same but here instead of add to cart button we have the customize button let's see whether this thing is working or not if you click on customize let's see what happens now as you can see this is the default color you have two colors available now you have created several colors if you remember let me show you let me again show you we have created several colors but because we have not created attributes you cannot have that option available we had created if you remember this color medium color and this small size and the second color medium size only because we have created these two variations we get these two options gold medium and this medium medium orchard small so only two variations so if you want to enable or if you want to show other options as well you have to add all those variations over here only that only then those colors and sizes will display over here you can also see this price calculation formula this is the base price for attributes this is the template and all those different options now let's see whether this thing is working or not let's try to add some template now let me do one thing let me select some of these options from here so maybe i'll select this first option so i'll click on this and this is how it looks like now i can do some more changes for example i can bring it over here like this i can uh select this much i can group them i can ungroup them i can increase or decrease the size like this okay for text also and for all these other things maybe i want to change the color of this thing this black color instead of this black color or maybe instead of this white color logo if i want to change the color of this logo to maybe 
this pink color, I can select that and I can do that. Instead of this black color, uh, black color text, I want to change the color maybe to, let's see, white color or some other color, I can do that as well. I can also change the font style. So instead of this font style, I can select maybe this font style or some other font style like this, all right? So a lot of things can be done and can be changed from here. You can also add some clip arts. So I can select this clip art. I can increase or decrease the size of the clip art. I can also upload my own images. So let me do uh, let me do that and let me show you. For example, if I upload maybe this image, let me upload this image. I can click on this image and now as you can see, this image will be displayed. And once you have a background image, you can do one thing. You can also uh, mask this thing. For example, if I go to shapes, and if I select maybe this heart icon, okay, I'll bring this heart icon over here. Now what I can do is I can select this background image and after that I'll get this option. I can click on this star icon and I can select that shape. So I'll select this heart shape and let's see what happens. Now as you can see, that background image is now in that heart shape if you can see. I Let me un undo that thing and let me show you with some other shape. Maybe let me select this shape, this crown shape so I can bring it over here increase the size of this thing like this, maybe a little bit smaller. And again, I'll, I can click on this background image, click on this mask icon, I can select the shape. And now as you can see, this is how it will look like. So you can do a lot of things like this. You can also add some text, some custom text. You can increase the size, decrease the size, change the text altogether. Okay, like uh, instead of this thing, I want to type maybe Nayar. So I'll, I'll just type in my name over here. I can change the color, I can change everything from here. You can also control layers. For example, right now, this text is at the top of the layer. I, I can do one thing, I can bring this crown icon, if you remember, at top. So I can bring this shape, which was uh, this shape, I can bring it at top. Not this shape, it was, let's see, it was another one. It is the mug, I guess. Yeah, it is the mug. If you bring this mug at top, now as you can see, this is at top of everything else. Now I can also hide some uh, things from here. For example, if I want to hide this cat clip art, I can click on this eye icon. Now, as you can see, that thing is now hidden just to see the changes that take place on this image. Again, I can display that thing. So you can do a lot of things over here. I'm just showing you. Now you can also draw something. For example, you can inc uh, uh, decrease or increase the size of the brush, select the color. Maybe let me select this white color and you can draw anything like this. All right. And at the bottom, you will see how many colors you have used. So here, as you can see, we have used six colors in total. You can do a lot of more things over here. And you can also design at the back of the t-shirt. So you can click on this icon at the right hand side. And now you can also design the back of the t-shirt. You can add some, you know, anything you want. Now, once you have completed this thing, you can either share this thing. You can print uh, this thing. You can select this uh, type of print, PNG, SVG size and everything and you can also add this product to cart. So maybe I like this design, I want to purchase this design. So I'll click on add to cart and this thing will take place and after that we have to do checkout. Now this is the checkout page. We have to do a lot of styling option over here but I'm just showing you for now. This is how it looks like. You can also see your design over here at the bottom. If you think everything is fine, you can just click on proceed to checkout. And now let's see what all things happen. So let me just very quickly fill in my billing information. All right, so I have filled in my billing information. Now, if I scroll down, let me show you a few things. First of all, if you see shipping is applied over here, $6 because we have selected the shipping class of T-shirt and GST 10 rate or 10% GST is applied over here. So 10% of $24 is $2.5. So all these things are successfully applied and you can now pay with cash on delivery. You can pay with PayPal or you can even with your credit card or you can even make payment with your credit card or your debit card. And you can also save the payment information to your my account for future purchases. So you can do this thing as well. I'm just selecting cash on delivery just so that I don't have to make payment to myself. So I'm just selecting cash on delivery and after that we'll click on place order. Now once a customer places an order, they can see the order number, they can see all the different details, the uh, shipping address, billing address, everything. Now you as the admin, what you will see, let me show you. You will come back to your dashboard. Let's go to dashboard. Whenever you come to your dashboard, you can see now you have $24 sales this month. You have one order awaiting processing. So you can click on this or you can do one thing from the left hand side. You will see WooCommerce under WooCommerce. If you click on orders, you will land on same page and here you can see this order. So click on this thing. And now this is the design. You can download this design as PDF, 
PDF crop marks or you can also view this in Lumice editor. So let me download this as PDF. All right, so this is the design. This is the PDF design of the product and this is the size of the paper and everything is selected. Now I can download this design and I can do whatever I want to do with this. Or you can do one thing, you can open this thing in Lumice editor. So whatever the person has designed, you will see the exact same thing on your screen like this. Now we can print this thing maybe in PNG, in SVG. You can select the paper size and everything. So you can do it like this as well. If you don't want to download in a PDF uh, design, you can also download this in P PNG and SVG and you can also control the paper size, custom size, all these different things. All right. Now let me tell you one more thing. Right now we haven't yet received this payment. This is cash on delivery. But if this payment was done through maybe through credit card or through PayPal, you would see that option over here. Under at the right, right hand side, you will see order notes. Under order notes, we have one notice uh, that payment to be made upon delivery. If the payment was successful, you would have received another notice which, which would say something like payment was successful and you would get all those different information regarding that payment. So once that payment would have been successful, you could print this t-shirt and once you ship this product to the customer you will have you have all the shipping details of the customer the phone number email address of the customer once you ship this product you will change the status of this product to completed and you will click on update and with this this product is now completed this transaction is completed if you go back to orders now as you can see the status of this order is now completed so this is how this whole process works Okay, so with this, all the settings related to the product designing website is now completed. Now only two things are left. First thing is to create pages uh, like we have the about page, the contact page and mo most importantly our home page. And the second thing that we need to do is to design final customization of the website, final designing of the website. For example, your single product page right now looks something like this. We have to convert this into something amazing and a better design like this one. So as you can see over here, this is this has a sidebar. We don't want, we don't want a sidebar. The the color used over here are really bad, not that great. The fonts and everything used over here are not that great. But this design looks so much better. So we will be designing this website and we'll be designing some other parts of this website. So let's do that. So first, let's start with the home page. Let's create our home page right now. If you see, if you try to, whenever someone visits your home page, it would look something like this. Just this hello world thing. So let's create our home page and let's design a page like this one. Okay, this looks so much better. 100% mobile friendly professional design. So to do that, first we need to create a new page. So from the left hand side, hover over pages, click on add new. Now you will see a screen like this. Just cut this thing. You, we need to give this page a title. So we'll just name it home page. Now if you just publish this page, let me show you and let me explain you everything step by step. Now if I try to open this page in a new tab, it would look something like this. Now there are a few, a few problems over here that we need to fix. For example, the first thing that we need to fix is that this is just a regular page. Now first of all, before even doing that, we don't want a sidebar in the home page. Here the page that we have just created, it has this sidebar right inside. So we need to get rid of this sidebar. So to do that, you need to come back to your website. Now here you will see these options at the bottom, Ocean WP settings option. Now make sure to change the content layout of this to 100% full width. And again, if you update this page, again, if you come back over here and refresh it, that sidebar is gone. Now this is 100% full width. Second thing that we need to get rid of is this title and this breadcrumb. So we need to get rid of this entire section. Basically, we just want a blank page. Okay, so to get rid of this title, come back to this page again. Now from the left hand side, you will see this settings or you will see this title settings. Click on that and now just disable this entire section. Click on disable again, update the page. Come over here, refresh it and that section is also gone. Now we have this header, we have the footer, nothing in between. Now the second thing that we need to do is if I again click on this, if I again go back to the home page, it still is the same old page. Now what we need to do is Basically, the page that we have just created, this home page, we have just created a regular page and we have just named it home. So just by naming it home, it does not become your home page. To make it your home page, we have to do few settings. So let me show you how you do that. So if you come back to this page and you will know this thing by seeing in your URL bar. So if you see your URL structure, your link structure right now, it says your website name slash home. So when you go to your home page, it should not say slash home. So let's fix this thing. Come back to your dashboard from the left hand side, hover over settings and click on permalinks or click on this option reading. 
Now over here, as you can see, right now your home page displays your latest post. We want to display a static page. So we'll select the second option. Under home page, just select home, the page that you have just created and click on save changes. If I again come over here and try to refresh this page. Now as you can see, we are still on this same page, but if you see the URL bar, now it does not say slash home. And if I click on this, now I don't see that old home page. Now that is replaced with this new home page. Now let's try to create this page and let's add these three sections on this page. So to do that again, we'll go back to pages and we'll search for home page, which is this. And now as you can see, besides this home page, it says front page, which means that this is now officially your front page. Now click on edit. Now to design this page, to create this page, we will be using Elementor. So first we need to get that plugin. So again, we'll come back to our dashboard, open a new tab and Elementor is a free plugin. So you don't need to worry about that. Now type in blogdo.com slash Elementor. And again, this link is also given in the video description below. So you don't even have to type in this thing. Simply click on that link and you should be redirected to this page. Now here you have, uh, you will see this button at the top right corner of this page, get started button. Click on this button. Now they will ask you to sign up or to create a new account. And that's really simple. Just enter your email address, just enter any password and click on create account. I already have an account, so I'll just click on login. So it is that simple. Enter your email address, just choose any password and click on sign up. Account will be created. Then you will see this screen. So do you already have a WordPress website? So yes, we do have. So we'll select the second option. Yes, I sure do. Click on continue. Now you need to enter your website address or your website link. So we'll copy this thing and we'll paste it over here. Click on check for WordPress. Now you should see this page. Now click on click to install. Now you will see this page and here at the bottom right corner, you'll see install now button. Click on that install now button. Let's see what happens next. And now as you can see, you're redirected to your dashboard. Click on activate plugin. Now you'll see this page. Now we don't need to go to this page again. Come back to your pages uh, file. So click on pages from the left hand side and click on edit for the home page. And you will see a new button over here which would say edit with Elementor right at top, this blue button, click on that button. And now let's start creating this page. Now, first of all, before we even start, let me show you and let me explain you what this Elementor is. So Elementor is basically a page builder, which obviously will help you to create different pages on your website. And how do you create those pages using these elements, which are present at the left hand side. So using these elements, you will create a, you know, a page or a section. And whenever you create a page, you should uh, you know, create it section by section. For example, here, this is our first section. Then after that, this featured products, this is our second section and our professional services. These services section is our third section. So we have to create it section by section. And if you want to create a new section, you simply come over here, click on this plus button to add a new section. You select how many columns you want in this section. So for example, we want two columns. Now left hand side things will change. And if you again want to go back to elements, if you want to see elements at the left hand side, you will click on this nine dots icon. If you follow my cursor, mouse cursor, you will see this nine dots icon, click on that. And now again, you have your elements. Now, for example, if you want to use button, if you want to create a button, you will simply drag and drop this button element wherever you want, and you will get that option. Now for every single element, there are three settings. For example, when you click on this button at the left hand side, you will see edit button. If you click on Im image, you will see edit image. So these are different elements for and for every single element, you will see three settings, content, style and advanced. Under content, obviously you just change the text to change the basic content. Under style, you change the style like the color, the size and the style of the typography, text shadow and so on and so forth. And under advanced, you will add some margin, padding, motion effects, background, border, positioning, those kind of advanced things. All right. So this is how this whole thing works. Now, let me delete this section. Let me show you everything from scratch. All right. So let's create our first section. So as I said earlier, to create a new section, we'll, uh, we'll click on this plus button. And now as you can see in our first section, we need two columns. Why? Because at the left hand side, we want to add this thing. And at the right hand side, we want to add this image. So I'll select two columns. Now at the left hand side, the first thing that we need is this text. So I'll copy this text and we'll go back to elements. And again, to go back to elements, you click on this nine dots icon. Now we will use this element heading element. So simply drag and drop it at the left hand side. Now change this title to something, whatever you want. So I'll change this to this thing, be creative and design your own product. 
Now we need to design this thing. So to design this or to style this thing, go to style. And here you will see several options. So first option is text color. So if you see over here, we are using this black color. But if you click on this black color, this is, you know, complete black color. The color code is 000. I want to make it a little bit lighter. So I'll add a custom color code over here. I'll add 222. All right. So if you click on 222 over here at the bottom, you will see this black color. Then after that, I need to increase the size and also change the font style. So if for, to do that, we'll go to typography, click on this pencil icon. Now let me change the font family first of all. So for this, now there are a few font families that I really like. For example, we have Roboto, Montserrat, Lato, Poppins, you know, those kind of font, font families. So for this one, I want to set this to Lato. And now as you can see, the style is changed. And I also want to change the size. I want to increase the size to maybe 50 pixels. All right, over here, as you can see, and I need some space between the lines. So as you can see, this is first line, this is second line. These lines are intersecting. If I select this much, as you can see, I need to add some space between the lines. So again, I'll click on this pencil button and under line height, maybe I'll type in 1.4. And now as you can see line, the space between lines are now increased. Now let's do one thing. Let's add this second text. So I'll copy this thing again, again, go back to elements, use the heading thing, paste in your text again, go to style. Now for this color, I want this to be, let's see, we have, we want this gray color thing. So to do that, you can either click on this color, which is given over here at the top, or you can do one thing. You can type in seven, seven, seven. All right. You will get this color, very much similar color. Now let's change this styling for this as well. So go to typography. And for this also, I want to make it uh, maybe not Lato this time. Let's set this to Poppins. So set Poppins. This is how it will look like. Now this is pretty bold. I want to decrease the size and uh, maybe size is fine. Let's just make it a little bit lighter. So under weight, let's make it 400. And now this looks much better. And again, I think we need some space between lines. So for this, maybe let's select 1.4. I think the first option line is line height is a little bit more. I think 1.2 looks much better. That was 1.4 was a little bit more. Now click on update. So whenever you do any changes to this page, you should always update those changes. Now let's see what we have next. After that, we have these buttons. Now, if you want, you can either do it like this. Basically, if you do it like this, this will be, uh, there will be a problem. If you drag and drop this button over here, you will see this button. But besides that button, we need another button. And if you try to do the, do it like this, for example, if I try to bring this button, you can see I can either put this at top or bottom. I cannot put it at side. Okay. So this is not looking good. So to fix this thing, what we'll do is we'll, we'll divide this left side column into few more columns. So we'll use this element inner section. We'll drag and drop this thing over here. And now as you can see, this column is furthermore divided into two more inner columns. Now at the left hand side, we can have this button and later on at the right hand side also, we can add another button. So first of all, the button text here says all products. So I'll type in that same thing over here under text. I'll type in all products. Now, if you want to link this page to something, so I want to link this page to the shop page. So I'll just search for shop and you will get this option at bottom shop page. Click on that and it will replace it with your shop page link. Then after that, go to style and let's style this button. So as you can see, this is the color and everything. Now, let me tell you about one free Google Chrome extension that would be very helpful for you. So whenever you go to any website and if you like the color, for example, if you like this color or if you like this red color, if you want the exact same color, you can open a new tab and type uh, and search for Colorzilla Google Chrome extension. You will get this first option, open that. And this is the free Chrome extension, Colorzilla. Select this thing and instead of this button, for me, it says remove from Chrome. For you, it would, it would say something like add to Chrome. So click on that button. This color extension will be added to your Google Chrome browser. And once it is added, you will see this color picker icon. So click on that icon and now bring your cursor to whatever color you want. For example, I want this red color. I'll bring my cursor to that color and just click on that. This color will be copied for you. The color code will be automatically copied for you. And you have to now go and wherever you want to paste it, just paste that color. For example, we want, we will come over here under style and under background color. I'll select this thing and I'll just paste in that color over here. Now, as you can see, we have the exact same color. Now I need to do a few more settings. For example, I need to change the style of the font. So let's go to typography and let's make it Poppins. 
this is the font that I'll be using mostly uh, throughout the website. So I'll make it pop-ins and let's change this size to maybe 18 pixels and let's make it a little bit lighter, 400. All right, so this is how it will look like. Now I need to do one more thing. Uh, if we, if I hide this thing, you will see the corners are rounded if you see properly. But here we don't have rounded corners, we have sharp corners. So by default, there is some border radius going on over here. So under border radius, I'll make it zero. So those things will disappear. Now, as you can see, we have a perfect rectangular button. If you want to change the padding of this button, you can do that. So uh, for example, if you see this thing at bottom, there is some default padding for the button. If I delink this thing, now as you can see, padding is gone, which means that there is no space from any side, no extra space for the button. Now I can add my custom padding over here. So what I want to do is for top and bottom, I want to add 18 pixels and for left and right 40 pixels. All right. So you can see that on your screen and this according to me looks much better. Now what I'll do is I'll simply update this thing. Now once you have created one button, you don't need to do everything from scratch for the second button. You can right click on this button, click on copy, right click on the second column and paste in this button over here. Now you need to do some basic things. For example, first thing is to change the text to design for yourself. So let's change that text. Now we need to change the link. So I want to link this with the with this page design editor page. So I'll search for design under link and select this option. Select this page design editor page. Now let's change this style. So go to style. First thing that I need to do is I need to change the color of the text. So go to typography and you will see this text color over here. Don't go to typography. Just select the text color and over here you can select black. And again, I'm saying I will select 222. All right, this color. And now I need to change the background color for this one. So for this, I want to make it very light gray. So I'll make it E5, E5, E5. And this is how it will look like. All right. Let me show you. This is how this button looks like. Now I don't want this much gap in between. So I can easily remove the gap or reduce it like this. All right. And this looks much better. Just click on update. Or if you want to, you know, if you want more uh, control over this, you can do one thing. You can select this option, inner section. If you see this six dots icon, blue or uh, blue six dots icon, click on edit inner section. Under column gap, make it no gap. Now you can control it even more like this. Okay. Now as you can see, you can now you can have very little space between these buttons. But I want I don't want to do that. I want this much space in between. So maybe let's. This according to me looks good. Click on update. Now what we need to do is we need to add this text, the final text. I'll copy it. And again, for this also, I'll just use the heading thing. I'll drag and drop it over here, add this text and let's style this thing. I don't want to link it with anything. I'll just uh, style it thing. So for this color, I want this 777, this gray color. Now for typography, I want to make it poppins. So select poppins. Let's decrease this size to 15 pixels and let's make it lighter. 400. All right, let's see. Now we have we have very little space at bottom. So what I'll do is I'll select the first section inner section, go to advance and let's add some space at bottom. So bottom padding, I'll make it 15 pixels. Okay, now as you can see, we have some space at bottom. Now click on update. Now if you see this blue color thing below this button, that is just some problem. If you refresh this page, that thing will be disappeared. Now, as you can see, now everything looks much better. Now, the only thing left is to add this image at the right hand side. So let's do that. So let's drag and drop this image element at the right hand side. Let's replace this image with, let's see, with this image, select this image, click on insert media. Now you can control the size of this image. So right now, as you can see, image size is large. I want to have a custom image size and I want to have a size of 500. Select 500 under height, click on apply. Width will be automatically adjusted if you select height, all right? Or if you select width, height will be automatically adjusted. Now I need to do one thing. If you see, it does not look that great. I want to bring this thing, all the text in between, okay? Like we have it over here. Everything is in the middle, not at top or at bottom. So to do that, I'll select this option, main section, click on edit section and go to advance or don't go to advance under layout, you will see vertical align, make it middle. Now, if you're not able to click on this option, 
edit section sometimes it may happen you might not be able to click on this edit section so what you can do is at the bottom left corner you will see navigator click on navigator here click on section you will get edit section option at the left hand side let me show you if i click on this button and if i'm not able to click on edit section what i can do is under navigator you will see this section now first see at the left hand side now it says edit button the settings are related to this button if i click on section now as you can see it says edit section now the settings are related to section so if you're not able to click on this six dots icon at the top do it like that go to advance and go don't go to advance <laughs> again i'm saying the same thing under layout just make the vertical align middle all right and this is how it will look like all right guys so with this our first section is now completed now whenever you create a section you should always see how that section looks on a mobile phone and also on a tablet especially on a mobile phone because according to google's research most of the people will be visiting your website from a mobile phone so most important is a mobile phone then desktop and tablet is not really important so let's see how this website looks on a tablet and also on a mobile phone so to do that to see that at the left hand side bottom you will see this responsive mode this desktop icon click on that icon select tablet and this is how it looks on tablet now we need to fix few things over here so first of all we need to fix this text the first text so i'll select this text and let's decrease the size of this one it was 50 pixels i guess so let me make it 30 or maybe 32 you can increase and decrease this thing and whatever you like maybe 33 is fine so i'll keep it 33 i'll select the second text and again for this also i want to decrease the size let's see i think 18 pixel looks perfect now for the button i'll click on the first button go to style and let me make it 15 pixels and let's decrease the padding so i'll go to padding and may type in 10 this looks much better now to do the same thing over here we'll click on the second button come over here under typography size will be 15 and padding will be 10 from all sides all right so this looks much better let's see yeah so it looks so much better now on tablet now if you go back to your desktop it is still the same no changes have taken place on desktop these changes are only for desktop uh, for tablet now if you go to mobile phone here also we need to fix these things so first of all select the first text now under mobile phone basically you should make everything center align so select the first text go to content set alignment to center all right and you can now change the size of the text so maybe let me see i'll make it uh, i just want this in two lines so i'll keep this to 30. select the second text again make sure everything is center and i think second text looks good but if you want again you can just go ahead and decrease this size as well let's see maybe 14 or 15 looks good whatever you, looks good to you just keep that thing now here for mobile phone what i'll do is in by default these buttons come in two lines i want both of them side by side so what i'll do is i'll select this option edit column for the button one and under column width i'll make it maybe 40 pixels or 40 percentage and for the second button i'll select this edit column and i'll make it 60 so 40 plus 60 100 percentage and they will be one sing they will be in one single line now as you can see this looks so much better and if i go again go back to desktop everything is same over here click on update so whenever you create a section you should always see how that section looks on a mobile phone and also on a tablet now let's create our second section which is very easy only this section was a little bit uh, you know we had to spend some time on this section but for uh, next two sections those are really simple so let's create a new section and again as i said earlier to create a new section click on this plus button how many columns we need we just need one single column this time so i'll select a single column now first of all we need this heading featured product or whatever your heading is so we'll bring this heading at the bottom change this heading style i'll make it center aligned because this text is aligned in center now go to style change this color to the same color 222 just to get this black color now go to typography and for heading i want to make it lato 
So what I'm doing is I'm keeping everything consistent. If you remember for this, for the first section also, our heading was Lato, rest all the other text were pop-ins. So here also for the heading, I want to make it Lato. So go to typography, we had made it Lato. Now let's increase the size to 35 pixels. All right, this looks good. And after that, at bottom, I want to display these products. Okay, whatever products you have created. So to do that, you will search for short code drag and drop this short code at bottom and what short code do you want to enter over here for that again you need to open a new tab and search for woocommerce short codes go to google search for woocommerce short codes click on the first link you will open this page now if you scroll down you will see let's see now these are the short codes different example for product scenario so scenario one if you want to display random sales item you need to copy this short code if you want to display featured products, you need to copy this short code. So let's dis uh, display featured products. Or if you want to display a recent products, best selling products, you just need to copy these short codes. I want to display featured products, so I'll copy this short code. Come over here, paste it under short codes. Now you won't see any, any products displayed over here. Why? First, let me update this thing and explain you. Because we haven't set this product as the featured product. We have created a product. Uh, that t-shirt product beer, but that product is just a regular product not a featured product So in order to set that product as a featured product and you need to go back to your dashboard Click on products from the left hand side and you will see this option over here this star icon If you click on that this will automatically make it featured product now as you can see this is your featured product So again if I come back to this page and refresh it, let's see what happens Scroll down now as you can see it shows because this is now your featured product now I see some problems over here. We had created our first section. Now whenever you create your first section or any section, you should always add some space at top and bottom. Now as you can see, as I was talking to you earlier, now I am not able to click on that edit section at top. Earlier I was able to do that, but now I am not able to do that. So I have already shown you how to fix that thing. At the bottom left, click on navigator, click on section 1. Now go to advanced and let's add some padding for top and bottom. So for this, for top, I'll add 75 and for bottom, 50. Now this has added this 50 pixels at bottom. So similarly for second section also, I'll click on edit section and go to advanced. Let's add some padding at top and bottom again. So for this, I want to add padding of maybe 75 at top, not 75, 50 at top and 50 at bottom. All right. So we have space at top and also space at bottom. I also want to do one thing. I want to add some space below this title. So there is some space between the title and these products. So click on this product title, go to advance and let's add some uh, spacing below this. So padding bottom 25. All right, 25. Now let's come back to this product. So click on this product short code. Now what does this short code say? It shows it will say it says limit is equal to four which means that it will display four products i want to display eight products so i'll type in limit is equal to eight columns two i want to display four columns so i'll make it four like you see over here we have four columns and total we are displaying eight products all right so with this this section is also completed you can just see how this looks on a tablet and also on mobile phone so it looks perfect no problem on mobile phone maybe i'll decrease the size of this heading a little bit Alright, so I'll make it maybe 34. Alright, click on update. Come back to desktop and let's create our third section, final section. So click on this add new section or maybe let's do one thing. Let me see. Yeah, let's do one thing. Let's add a new section. Click on this and we want again a single column. Now I want to do one thing. I want to just click on this, right click on this copy, right click over here, paste just to save some time. And the only thing that I need to do is change the text. I don't need to style this thing. Okay, so these these things can be done to save some time. Now let's see how we can create these things, these uh, icon boxes. So to create these, first of all, I want three icon box in one line. So again, I will use inner sections. I'll drag and drop it over here. By default, we have two columns. If I want to add one more column, I'll right click on this edit column section, click on add new column. Now, as you can see, we have three different columns. Now in the left column, I want to add icon box. I'll search for icon box and select this one. Icon box which says e-kit at top right. Okay, this one. Drag and drop it over here. 
Now this is how it will look right now. I want to do one thing. I want to first of all change the icon. The first icon that I need is this printer icon. So click on this and you can just search for this printer icon. And this is the icon that we have used. So I'll select this, click on insert. We have this icon, now the heading. So here the heading says screen printing. So let's type in the same thing over here. Then after that, let's add this lorem ipsum or whatever text you want to add. Then after that, what in, we need to do is we need to set everything at left hand side. We need to align everything towards left side. So we'll scroll down and I think it is under settings. Yeah, here it is. Content alignment will be at left side. And this is how it will look like. Now let's style this thing. So go to style. Now the first thing that I need to do is style this container, this entire section. So you will see this option icon box container. Now, if you see the, uh, the default color is this color and when I hover over this, the color changes. So we need to do one thing. We'll select this option icon box container and here we have background type. Select this background type and add any color over here. Now I want to add this color. So for this color code, you want to add F7, F6, F2. Okay. You will get this color F, F7, F6, F2. All right. And when you hover over this, Okay, nothing happens. So I want to change the hover color. So I'll go to hover again, background type color again. And here again, if you want to get this color, you can use this color picker, go click on that color, paste in over here. And now as you can see, when you hover over this color changes, now let's change the style for icon content, everything. So first let's start with icon. Now, first of all, I want to change the icon color to this black color. So I'll change this thing to two to two three times or six times it's same now size by default it is 40 I want to make it 55 all right this is how it looks like I also want to add some space below this icon so we should have space let's see here it is spacing so I'll delink this thing and at bottom I will type 25 pixels now we have some space at bottom now let me see one thing if you hover over this now as you can see when I hover over this thing, the color changes, everything changes to white, the icon text and all these text. Right now it, it remains black. So I need to change the hover color. So go to hover, select icon hover color and make it white. Now let's see again. And now as you can see the background color also changes and this color also changes. Now let's go to content. So select content. First of all, I want to change the typography of this. So I'll select this uh, for here. We have title and subtitle. So this is for title and this is for description. So for title typography, I want to change this thing to Poppins. Let's make it Poppins. By default, it is Roboto, I guess. So let's make it Poppins. And now you can control the size and everything, whatever size you like. So maybe for this, I want to make it 20 pixels. I want to make it a little bit lighter at 500. Okay, wait. And again, when you, when you hover this, the screen, uh, the text color remains same. I want to change that thing. So again, I will select this color hover and we'll make it white. Now, if I hover over this, the color changes. Now let's select this description thing. So select this description and go to typography first. Just make it poppins and let's change the color. The color default color is fine. Hover color is should be white. All right. Now, as you can see, this is hundred percent completed. One more thing. If you want to add some animation to this icon on hover, you can go to icon, select hover and hover animation grow or whatever animation you like. Now, if I hover over this, now, as you can see a little, very subtle animation to this icon. Now, again, you don't need to do this thing again and again, just right click over here, click on copy, right click, paste, right click, paste. Now, the only thing that you need to do is click on the second option change the icon, change the text and styling thing. You don't have to do anything with that. All right. And for this thing, again, right click on this inner section and duplicate it. You will have one more column like this. Now click on update. And finally for the top and bottom uh, spacing. So click on edit section advance for padding top 50 and for padding bottom also 50. Now click on update. So this is how this thing is done. And with this, your home page is now completed. So let's cut this thing and let's come back to our dashboard. I right, guess now let's very quickly create all the other pages like the blog about and contact page. So to do that from the left hand side, hover over pages and click on add new. Let's start with the blog page because this is the most simplest one. So just type in title blog, publish this page. And just like the home page, we have to set this page as the blog page. So again, come back to your dashboard, hover over settings, click on reading. 
and under post page, just select this block page that you have just created and click on save changes. And that page is now set as your block page and how to do some changes on that page. We'll see later on. If you see if right now your website name slash blog, this is your block page. Okay. And we'll, we'll see how to do some changes and how to create a blog. So maybe let's just see how a blog is created right now. If I open a blog in this demo website right now, the blog page would look something like this and a single blog page would look like this. First, we have the feature image title and the content. So pretty simple. Now over here under blog page, you will see this hello world, which is a dummy post. Make sure to first delete this thing. Now let's create our own blog. So click on add new. First thing that we need is to enter this title over here. And after that, whatever text you want to add, you just add it like this. So I will not waste much time over here because this is not really important and related to this website, but I just wanted to include this thing as well. So I'll just copy and paste all the content over here. Now from the right hand side, make sure to first click on document. Now give it a category and remember this category is different from the product category. Earlier when we created our t-shirt product, we gave it a category of t-shirt, but this is related to these categories are related to blog and post not related to you know, products or anything else. So maybe this product is talking about technology or this, um, this thing, this post is talking about technology. So I'll create a new category technology. Click on add new category. We'll give it a featured image. Let me upload a new featured image for this. Maybe. Okay. Let's select this one. Click on open set featured image, featured image is set. And now you can just publish this page. You can see this post, click on view post. This is how it looks like. If you want to see the blog page, your website name slash blog. If you see, this is your blog page. We'll change the design. We'll make it something like this one right now. The image as you can see is pretty big and this is how it looks like. I want to make it like this, but we'll do that at the end uh, under our final customization. Now let's create the about page and you don't worry. You don't have to create the about page. I'm giving you free layout. We just need to import that. Let me show you how you can do that. Again, hover over pages, click on add new and give this page a title of about or about us, whatever you like, and make sure to change the content layout to hundred percent full width and disable the title. These two things, just like we did in the home page. Now publish this page, click on edit with Elementor. Now we don't need to create everything from scratch for this thing because that will take a lot of time. So you can simply click on this middle icon, add template. Go to my templates right now. We don't have any. So let's upload our custom template. So again, as I said you earlier, there is a link given in the video description. If you click on that link, you will download a file. And in that file, you will have all the images like these. And you will also have, a, let me show you, you will also have a folder, which would say pages folder. And under that you will see two files. So import both the files. Let's first import the about us file. Again, click on import. Let's import the contact us file. Now, because we are creating the about us page, let's select this page, click on insert. The only thing that you need to do is just replace these images. For example, select this image instead of this image. If you want to add some other image, you can do that. You can upload it from here. Let's see. Let me select this image for this. Click on insert into image for these images. I'll click on this. So the only thing that is, you can see the only thing that you need to do is now replace these images with your own image. And I want to upload these images, select this, select the second one, select this image and similarly select the third one for this image. Let me select maybe this one, click on open, click on insert media. And this is now completed. Update this page. Now again, come back to your dashboard and let's create the final page, which is your contact page. Let's give it a title of contact or contact us, whatever you want. Make the content layout 100% full width and disable the title and publish this page. Now click on edit with Elementor again. Again, click on add template, go to my templates, just import the contact page. And your contact page should be present over here just like this. Only thing again you need to do is change your address, phone number and everything. Now if you want to add that contact form over here, search for contact form seven, contact form seven, which is over here, drag and drop it over here and under style, select contact form one, which is already created for you. This is how it will look like now click on update. 
you can do some changes in this style like you can change the typography input and you can also change the button style from here i'm not doing that because this video is already getting pretty longer so let me do one thing come back to dashboard and with this all the pages are now created the only thing left is the final customization so right now your website looks like this now to complete this website two basic things are now left the first thing is your uh, menu at the top and then after that you have your footer at the bottom so these footers and your menu so let's first create this menu so to do that come back again to your dashboard from the left hand side hover or appearance click on menus now let's create our main menu first so just give it a title of main menu or primary menu whatever title you want you can just give it any title and after that click on create menu now select what all pages do you want to display in this menu so i'll select pages home about uh, blog contact design editor page and shop page i want to display these pages all right yeah we have selected all the pages now you can rearrange them like this drag and drop them wherever you want so i want this this format and after that make sure to tick mark this thing main which is given at the bottom click on save menu now again if you come back over here refresh this page you will see your menu at top now let me do one thing let me create two more menus because right now if you see at the bottom these two things are also menu at the bottom in the footer so let's create a new menu click on this link create a new menu click on leave let me give it a title of footer one click on create menu and in the footer one basically in the second footer in the second menu i want to display the same home page menu but in the footer one menu which is for customer i want to display these links woocommerce endpoints links so i want to display these six links over here click on add to menu now you don't need to tick mark anything at the bottom just click on save menu All right so this menu is now created now let's create our let's fix our footer so under appearance you will see widgets click on that again click on leave now you'll see footer one footer three footer four all those options under footer one we want to display uh, this text and our logo so for this we will use text element so if you want you can just press ctrl f on your keyboard and search for text and let's see here it is click on this select footer one click on add widget now at top first we want to display our logo so click on add media and upload your logo so let me go to upload file and let me upload the logo which is over here click on open insert into post and below your logo whatever text you want select that upload that thing now in footer 2 and 3 i want to display these menus i want to give it a title of for customers so again over here i'll search for navigation menu if i search for navigation menu let's see here it is navigation menu select this select footer 2 add widget i'll give it a title of for customers and the menu that i want to select is this footer 1 all right now for footer uh, three also i want to select the same option navigation menu select footer three add widget and this time i want to give it a title of quick links and i want to display the main menu that we have created so i'll select main menu click on save now for footer four i want to display these contact informations so here it is at the top contact info drag and drop it under footer four. First thing i want to delete these text from here now you have your address now under address or under any option don't change the icon class and title just change the content so instead of this address just enter your own address for phone number mobile number also if you don't want to display the facts delete everything under facts similarly if you don't want to display your website and uh, probably your skype delete everything under that option and click on save now again if you come back to your website and refresh it let's see what happens now as you can see you have your footer so we have the header we have the footer now let's do the final customization because if you see your footer also looks totally different than the one in the demo website so let's fix this thing so to do the final customization click on this customize option at top now for customization also i want to start from top so at top as you can see by default we have some space at top of the menu to, ha uh, to have your top bar i don't want to display that top bar so i'll select this option top bar option click on general and i'll just disable this thing so untick this thing enable top bar just untick that thing that thing will disappear click on publish 
come back and now let's fix this main header. So to fix the main header, click on header and let's start from top. First thing is general. I want to decrease the size because I think the height of this header is a little bit more. By default it is 74, I want to make it 60, all right? Now the height is decreased. Now I'll come back. If you want, you can also decrease, uh, change the background color and all. I don't want to do that. Come back and let's select logo. Let's upload our logo for the header. I don't want to crop this thing, so I'll click on skip cropping. Now this is your logo. Come back and select the menu. Now if you want, you can uh, do some changes in the menu. For example, the color of the menu. I want to change this thing to this color, 222. Now again, let's come back and let's select this option, typography. Let's increase the size of this thing. Okay, so I'll select main menu and let's increase the size of this. So I'll make it uh, instead of 13 pixels, I'll make it maybe 18 pixels. Now, as you can see, the size of this thing is now increased. Now let's fix this footer. So again, come back, select footer widgets, scroll down. Let's change the background color to F9, 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 light background color. And when you have a light background color, all your text and everything should be darker. So text color, I'll make it black. And for link color, also I'll make it black. All right, so we have text color black, link color black. The only thing that we need to do is change the color for this one, for the title of this footer widgets. So again, we'll go back to typography and at the bottom, you will see footer widget heading. Change that color to black color. And now as you can see, you can also see this thing. I also want to make it uh, bolder. So I'll select uh, semi bold, maybe click on publish. Now let's fix this thing at the bottom footer copyright text. So come back again, select footer bottom, change your copyright text from here. Don't delete copyright and ocean WP date. Delete this much ocean WP theme by Nick and make it something like uh, made by Nayashik. You can also uh, use HTML elements over here, like your, you know, you have your link element, all those elements. And I want to change the text color to white, not gray. And now as you can see your copyright at the bottom. Now we can publish this thing. Now I also want to do one thing. If I open the blog page, this is how the blog page was looking. So let's fix this blog page first. Come back, select blog, blog entries. And by default, this style is large image. I want to set this to thumbnail. Let's see what happens. This is how it looks like. And I want to change the main uh, typography to Montserrat. So if you come to typography, you will see body. This is the main typography. Change this thing to Montserrat or Poppins, whatever font family you like. And change the font color to black. Okay, so that these colors, the body color changes to black, which is very important. Again, publish this page. Now let's do some changes to the shop page, to the product, single product and the shop page. So come back again, select WooCommerce. First, let's make changes to this shop page or the archive page. So you will see this option archives, select this. Now for the archive, I don't want to display this thing and I also don't want to display the button. I just want to display this title and this price. So I'll scroll down and I will disable this thing, category, disable description, disable add to cart button. Let's see. Now as you can see, we have only the title and the price. If you want, you can also disable the price. You will have only your title. Obviously not recommended. Now publish this page. Now let's see how to design the single product page. So if you open the single product, this is how it looks like. So again, come back under WooCommerce, select single product and make it full width. I don't want this sidebar, so make it full width. Now this looks much better. Scroll down at the bottom. I also want to display related products, but in related products, I want to do one small change. Let's see related product setting up sale. Here it is related products, related items count, change the items count to four and also columns to four. Okay. Related item count four. related products, column to four and publish this thing. Now we need to do a few more things. If you want to do them, for example, come back under WooCommerce, we have advanced styling. If you want to change the color of this thing. Oh, okay. So if you want to change the color of this price or the text uh, style of the price, you can do that here. We will be changing color, scroll down and go to this option, single product. Here it is single product. And over here, if you want to change this color, select this color. And instead of this, I want to set this to this color, 6D C4 B4. All right. I'll copy these things 
If you want to make it lighter or darker, I will, I'll make it darker. I'll make it 00C4A0. This is the darker version of this color. Copy it, publish this thing. Now, as you can see, this is the color is now changed. I also want to do one more thing. If I go back to typography, I also want to change the style. So select style, go at the bottom. You will see WooCommerce product price, make it Lato or any other font you want. And let's make it medium, a little bit bolder or maybe semi bold. Okay, this is how it looks like. Now click on publish. Now by default, this blue color is the primary color. That's why you will see this color everywhere on the home page. I want to change this primary color. So I'll go back at the beginning, general option, general styling. Now, as you can see, this is your primary color. I want to change this color and I want to set, uh, let's see. Let me open. I want to use that red color. Okay, this color as my primary color. So again, I'll use the color picker. Bring my cursor to that red color. Click on that. Paste in this color over here. All right. Like this. Uh, also under primary hover color, I will just make it a little bit lighter. Click on publish. Now, as you can see your button, all these colors now where whatever color is used, everything will become red because your primary color is now changed. Now, one more thing that I want to do, I'll come back and uh, I want to increase the size of this cart icon under pro under WooCommerce. You will see menu cart. Let's increase the size of that cart icon and let's make it center vertically. All right. This I think looks better. Click on publish. And with this, I think your styling is now completed. It looks good. Yeah, with this, your styling is now completed. Now you can cut this thing. Now, final thing to do is customization of the widget. So as you can see in the shop page, you have this widget. If you see the shop page in the demo website, you have some useful widgets like filter by price, these things. And right now, whatever you have, these are not really useful. So if you want to change these things, come back to widgets, which is under appearance. And first, let me minimize these things. Now under WooCommerce sidebar, you can add whatever widget you want. So first I want to add the search widget. So I'll search for search, which is over here. Select WooCommerce sidebar, click on add widget. So first thing that we have is search, which is this thing. Then we want filter by price. So I'll search that thing over here. Filter products by price. I'll select this thing, add widget. Then after that, we have product categories. So again, I'll search for categories. We have regular categories. Then we have product categories. Select this, click on add widget. And I don't want to show the hierarchy and I just want to display maybe six categories. Click on save. Then after that, we have the top rated products. So maybe I'll type in, I'll search for rate and products by rating. We have it over here. Select this add widget. Now, if you come back to your page and refresh it, you have it over here. All right. So this is how it looks like. If you don't see this pay, this uh, widget, Filter by price, that is because you have only one product. When you create more products uh, in different price range, you will see that option. Now that widget doesn't make any sense because there is only one price range over here. Or I guess now the final thing again and again, I'm saying final, but this is really the final thing. If you see your card page, your checkout page or your my account page, if you see your my account page, all these pages have this sidebar. As you can see, I make I want to make all these pages full width. So to do that, go back to pages and let's, uh, let me open everything in new tabs. So cart page, checkout page, my account page, these three pages, select the cart page, scroll down under content layout, make it full width, not hundred percent full width, just full width. Select the checkout page, scroll down, make it full width, update the page. Then also select the my account page and also make it full width. update the page. Now, if you come back to your my account and refresh it, this sidebar is gone. If you click on cart page again, that sidebar is now gone. All right, guys. Now one more thing. This is the final thing, uh, not really important, but you can, uh, just to, just to achieve that perfection. I think this, uh, the height of this button is a little bit higher because if you see this thing is, you know, this button height is higher than this thing. So if you want to fix this thing, you can, I think I've given you CSS codes. Let me see. Yeah, here it is. You will see this file CSS file. Just copy everything from this file. Come back to your website. Click on customize. Now from the left hand side, click on custom CSS and paste in this thing. 
Now, as you can see, that thing is gone. Now, the button color is also changed because I have set this button color over here. So if you want, you can just change that button color from here. Okay, customize button. As you can see here, it says customize button. Change this background color or you can just delete this background color. It will become this red color, whatever color you want. Now, as you can see, the height and everything is now much better. Click on publish. Now cut this thing and with this, this entire website, this tutorial is now completed. I hope you guys find this tutorial helpful. If you find this tutorial helpful, if you want to watch more tutorials, helpful tutorials like this one, make sure to subscribe and click on the bell icon because I have many more useful and profitable videos coming out in the future. Now, if you find this video helpful, give a thumbs up to this video, share it with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, WhatsApp, whatever social media platform you use. And throughout the video, if you have any doubts, any comments, any suggestions for me, you can always leave those comments in the comments section below. Thanks a lot for watching this video guys. See you in the next one.